morning Antigua and Barbuda, good morning to the entire world, good morning to the universe. We are live from the Coolidge Cricket Ground and it feels like we are at the Brian Lara Stadium in Trinidad and Tobago because on the left of us is a Trinidad and Tobago contingent of parents and supporters who have come to support the defending champions of the Cricket West Indies Under-15 Championship last year, Trinidad and Tobago. And they'll be coming up against arch rivals Guyana on the 15. The news is that Trinidad and Tobago have won the toss and will be starting. And so that's almost a good start. We already see Jerome and the number seven in Mohammed, the vice captain, moving out to the middle. And anytime soon, we'll be looking to see who will be bowling for the Guyana team. I'm joined by my colleague, Mali Richards. Mali, good morning. Good morning, Vernon. Good morning to the watchers, listeners here in the region and around the globe. Another exciting contest on the cards. As you said, the defending champs in Trinidad and Tobago versus the Guyana under-15 team in what is a blue sky so far. We had an unfortunate abandonment the, what, two days ago? Well, all the matches were abandoned, to be fair, but so far, blue skies, sun's out in all its glory. Pitch is looking good. The outfield's looking fantastic. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, I'm looking forward for this contest. This is going to be dubbed really one of the big games. Umpire standing today is Donald Shecklers from the CIUN and starting for the Guyana under 15 team. We say good morning to the folks in Guyana. Arif Khan weighing the number 88. And he will be bowling his first delivery, stroked up to cover loud cheer that he got the ball onto the target and the batsman also Jero made contact and this is what you love about these tournaments Vernon that enthusiasm that exuberance of youth it's all on show here as you said quite a large contingent of support for the Trinidad team it's really add, added to the atmosphere here at the CCG down the onside First wide of the morning from Khan. And Guyana starting conservatively with a slip. A little strange, Mali. Yeah, probably you'd like to see them start with two slips, actually. Anna Gully looking for wickets with this new ball. We've seen the ball swing here uh, at the CCG, that new ball. Within those first 10 overs, you've got to be looking to take those wickets. So just the one slip. Started quite defensive, to be fair. Quite a ring field on the offside backward point cover extra cover mid off good delivery and even though he got far across Mali, his foot got outside the line of the off stump it really didn't bounce it sort of went under his bat really more or less yeah the first two deliveries of this over from khan actually swung the first one actually swung away from the right-handed batter first feeler is and wicket keeper is Mohammed, Sohail Mohammed. The last two just tailed in. This one, he's lost his radar there. Yeah. Big out swinger, but wide signal by umpire Shekels. And that's okay. I like that. It had some pace and bounce on it, so you could know that he was trying something. Something similar to what we saw the other day, actually, when the Jamaican fast bowlers took the new ball. Just struggled early to control the swing. That was Freighter. And Robinson. From, yeah, from the CIU Road in. Young cricketer next to the scoreboard practicing his drills. Khan. Not Ali Khan. Back on target. Easy pace. And Jerome back and across and just punching it right up. As compared to Jamaica, Mali, the middle on and the middle off is in the traditional position. Yeah, the Jamaicans, they had a quite a close mid on straight as well almost in a catching position in line with the stumps at the non-strikers end quite like the look of Jerome though he looks like he's got a lot of time so far there's a piece for leg before that's he's out leg shout. before that's a good shot inward movement as we said Khan picks up the first so set back for the defending champs They've lost their first wicket with just two runs on the board. Look at the replay, Mali. I think he fell over. Look at his head position. Just said he had so much time. Looked quite a composed player. Just seemed to miss that one, to be fair. Yeah, played right around the straight one. And the guy on the 15 have struck early. Mohammed goes back without scoring. 
and that's part of the game it's a learning process like that celebration from the guy and the team there over the moon with that wicket Jerome and look good quite composed close close LBW shot was tailing in middle and leg was probably just clipping that leg stump so two for one the defending champs and can he strikes in the first over as we said Vern key that wickets are taken from a guy in a perspective with this new ball very early Zane Maraj wearing the number 10 quite a popular number Mali all around the world everybody wants that big number another right hander do I have that right yeah I can see it yes number 10 Zane Maraj so let's see how Maraj shapes up right hander it's a wide delivery, signal wide also by Donald Shekels. But that had some zip on it because he was excited. It did, and that's been good to see actually so far. We haven't we only saw what half of a match two days ago. But what was quite evident, there was some good athletes, some good medium pace bowlers on show. Freighter Robinson, I thought Delante Scott as well, he was quite impressive. Here we've got Khan already. For a moment I thought. I'll get back to that, Mal Mali. Oh, good leave. Beautiful delivery uh, from the young man. And it seems like his stock delivery is just that ball that tails in that inward movement from outside that off stump into the right-handed batter. I was going to say to you, Mali, I almost thought that it was Perez on the field. I mean, I'm looking <laughs> at Khan. He's got that sort of energy and bubble. The way you ran across the field there <laughs> reminded me of Senior Perez. Mm. That's it again tailing in yeah. in a half of the bat but the skipper Maraj just oh. manages to squeeze that to mid wicket over finally comes to an end yeah it seemed like quite a long one wasn't it yeah. but a successful one nonetheless and Trinidad and Tobago would be very disappointing that they've lost the first wicket in the first over but Ghana captain Adrian Hetmeyer he will be pleased yeah it'll be over the moon Arif Khan Picking up that first wicket, as you said, Hetmeyer is one of the players that we would have heard quite a bit about leading up to this tournament. Well, he was in our ear every day. Especially with Sean Devers. Sean Devers. Sharing uh, the same commentary yeah. box as Sean Devers. But the young man he seemed to be built up to, to live. Something make me feel, Mali, that I've seen number 92, Emmanuel Lois from last year. Maybe you have. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't do this tournament with you yeah. last year. Yeah. So. yeah, I think I saw him. He bowls a little medium pace. I was seeing him. I think he's a vice captain and he looked very organized in his batting. Um, so he's, he was a little nippy guy last year. Again, they were very conservative, the guy on the 15 team, starting with just one slip. Some big numbers as well on the shirts of these guys and these players. Very well. big. 102, the player at. Uh, <laughs> mid off <laughs> big big number yeah that's that gilbert griffith gilbert griffith we've got rivaldo Pereira with 105 dan vsc gobin 103 morning raymond griffith parmeshwa ram with 104 as well shape shaping oh that's close going down oh going down i'd love to see that again man yeah going down Big that going down. It's good delivery. <laughs> that inward movement again. This time through the air from Young Lewis. Uh, going down. Full toss. Going down. Yes, just going down in the end. <laughs> going down. Going down. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> good decision from Vernon Springer. But any another He's tailing at those pads there, another Emmanuel Lewis. Docker again from Lewis. Hesitation there for a while. Indecision. And at this level, the communication is going to have to be clear. And these young guys and these players are buzzing around in the field. As we said, they came out with a bit, a bit of energy already this morning, but that wicket in the first over has just seemed to given them, have given them another jolt of energy. They'd love to take another now. And as we said, it swings here early at CCG.
Emmanuel. Lewis. Boz gets away with that one. Wide delivery. But this time shows you that he's got the outswing of a. So we've seen the ball move already. Three deliveries. We've seen the ball move in the first two and this last one. As you said, a wide. But showing good skills from Lewis with that outswinger. Keeping it simple. Mm. Well played. Horning at those stumps. He's going hard. That was right on the money from the young man. Four for one. Mohamed is one. And they've lost Jerome without scoring. Pushed on to the offside there by Maraj. I love the energy from both teams so far. It's important that Maraj gets his footwork absolutely spot on here. Can't afford to just plant that front foot based on what Lewis is bowling, tailing in. Once again, Ooh. big movement it's inward. Going, it's going for those pads. Going to have to be as tight as possible. Yeah, these last three deliveries have been absolutely spot on. Just starting outside that off stump, tailing in. End of a very good over from young Lewis. Four for one at the end of two. Good skills on show from these young players so far. Yeah. Burn. Conversation taking place with Maraj and Mohammed. By Donald Shekels just going to what I was very much impressed, Mali, in the rain affected game with Jamaica and the Leeward Islands was how quick the turnover of the overs bowled by the Jamaicans under 15. Yeah, they really got through those overs, didn't they? They bowled 32 overs yeah. and spin. the first over, the six. Yeah, and spin came into the attack quite late. Late. It's going to be Khan to continue. Yeah, it's Arif. So his second over. And they're playing it a little conservative. The mid-on and the mid-off not too close. But giving the, themselves enough time that they can see the ball. One slip. I think it's important that Trinidad and Tobago here just fight this fight through. Fight through this little period. Yeah. Hope to see off this new ball. Well played. Well shot, but well played. Well played. And so far, all three batters that we've seen from the Trinidad team look to have quite, quite solid and compact techniques. Got right back onto the back foot, full face of the bat, quite stylishly played. And he got deep in the crease. That is what I liked about him. His head position was right over the line of the ball. The young man. Wiki keeper batter, Zachariah Mohammed. Played. Now he shows he's just as proficient on yeah, the front foot. On the front foot as well, yes. Got, looks like he's got the technique on the hallmarks of a pretty solid opening batter. And this is what again? you want to see at this level. That's exactly what you want to see. We said yeah. that on day one of this tournament, the fundamentals. I don't mind if he doesn't get 50, 70, 80, but I, I, I look at the technical aspects. I know this is somebody you can work with. And the most important thing, he's looking to play the ball straight up the V, not square. Good, good stuff this from Khan as well. He's really controlled this new ball here in his second over. Struggled a bit in terms of his radar in, the, in his first, but so far. A little tinge of green on the track here. Mm. Same track that was used um, for the first game. Arif Khan, tall guy for 15. This one's aerial, but over that backward point fielder. Fantastic Big work save done by, by Emmanuel the, Lewis. Emmanuel on the boundary, the third man. Big boundary. save. Athletic stuff indeed from him, saving a couple runs. They only got one, Mally. Actually, they would save three. Yeah. For some reason, um, the communication was just not right there. Maybe he thought he'd gone for four. Look at the save from Emmanuel. That's a big save. Love to see this again. Ac oh, actually, just pulled that back before his foot made contact with the rope. Oh, hold him up! 
Khan, extra pace, inward movement again. Vernon Springer pulled him. He was tailoring at the toes. He didn't get the back down in time and he lost his stumps. Number 88. Woo. He's announcing himself. Arif Khan. Big inward movement again. Probably hit that toe first, then onto the stumps. Woo. Fantastic delivery nonetheless. Zayn Maraj goes back for naught. And the skipper has to go back. What's that? The second duck already for the defending champs. They're in trouble here, Vern. They are in trouble. And Arif Khan is working up some pace here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground. Yeah, you could tell. Just went for that extra effort, did Arif Khan. And the good thing about it, Mali, both these countries have been involved in under 13 level and under 15 level in terms of preparation. So they would have known each other for some time. They've played some series of matches. And they look like they've prepared very well as well leading up to this tournament. Saw that one again. Big, big, big in swing there to the right hander. Opened him right up. So for the first time, Ali, we will have Taraj Muhammad, a left hander, coming out. Taraj Richards, sorry. Taraj Richards. Let's see if he's. Oh, that's he bowled him! He one didn't know anything second. about it! <laughs> he just freezed on the crease. And it's cock a whoop here. Arif Khan is on a hat trick. Tariq Richards. Bold without scoring. Let's have a look at this again. Gone around the wicket, did Khan. Extra pace. This one probably just kept a little low, but no footwork from Richards. Done for with that extra pace. Arif Khan will be on a hat trick. It's been three ducks already for the Trinidadian team. And in front of quite a vociferous support here at the CCG. Things are looking quite bleak, quite early. For Roberto Badre. Wonder if he's anything to Samuel Badre? Must. If he is, nephew. So he comes out under a bit of pressure. But if he follows, if he understands the history of Trinidad and Tobago, he will know that today is a big day for him. Good morning to you, Sammy Badri, wherever you are. I'm sure you're taking a keen interest in proceedings here at the CCG. Good Arif one. Khan has just turned the place upside down here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground. Yeah, the next time he bowls, Burn, his first delivery will be on a hat-trick. What can Lewis do to back him up here, though? Full toss, driven. driven. Down the ground for four. Beautiful shot. What a response that was. From Zachariah Mohammed. Full vice, toss. Vice captain of the Trinidad and Tobago under 15 team. Nice straight bat. Kept his head still. He was leading head and shoulders and a good cricket shot. Yeah, presented that full face. Good weight transference as well. Nine for three. The first boundary for the Trinidad team here. Yeah. He will still need to occupy himself, Zachariah Mohammed. And he clips this one beautifully. It's gone all the way. For six. Wow, what a shot that was from Mohammed. Ooh. Fast hands. Let's have a look at this again. Poor delivery from Lewis. Down the leg side. But look at that. Just flick the hands through it. Showed supple wrists as well. Not a big guy. And it sailed over the boundary for the first six for the Trin Trinidad and Tobago team here. Ten in two deliveries. All of a sudden, the game has changed. 15 for three. Well, he's launching a bit of a counter-attack. It was a poorly lined delivery by Lewis, to be fair. Yeah, he was but trying. he had to be put away. He was trying something. He's got to be back on the money. He's looking for that swing, Mali. At this time, Mohammed leading quietly and just playing it nice and straight. This yeah. is going to be an exciting game. Yeah, that's good to see from Lewis. Maybe at times, just over pitching but he's giving the ball every opportunity to think swing Jason in. No, my outside microphone I like the logistics in the air big save he was in the air for a long time almost that carried to that fielder at mid off Gilbert Griffith he's made a big save we're in the 102 yeah he moved quite well to his left I think he was to his strong side 
bit and there's, 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 there's left hand side. He does, he does just have the look of a left hander, uh, yeah. doesn't he? Say good morning to Ryan Griffith. Don't know what it is. Maybe he's just leaning a little bit to the left. Go shot this time with Lewis. Oh, he slipped. So they could have come back for two. But the striker actually slipped at when he was turning to come back for a second. Only managed to get one in the end. Roberto Badri that was, actually. First time we've seen Lewis just test out that shorter length. Hustled young Badri slightly, but well played in the end. Good intense stuff so far from these young guys. It's exactly what you want to see. Trinidad and Tobago under a bit of pressure, 17 for three. Swing again. Big in swing. Started outside that off stump. Jason, let's have a look at that one again. The end of that over from Lewis. Quite an expensive one. But with the ball swinging the way it is, still a threatening one nonetheless. Let's have a look at this final delivery from Lewis. Starting outside the off stump, tailing in on that middle and leg line. Young Emmanuel Lewis, as we said, giving the ball every opportunity to swing, and boy, is it swinging here. You know, Mali, even when we were on broadcast during the 40 competition, is something, a concern that you raise, that once the ball starts to swing around in the Caribbean, batsmen tend to have a challenge, and we've seen it early here at the under-15 level as well, and something I think the coaches would have tremendously worked on. See young Badri just changing his footwear he slipped in that previous over coming back for a second not sure if he had the spikes on if he didn't that's a fine <laughs> in our time yeah. gotta go out in the right equipment right equipment but Arif Khan the man of the moment so far he's picked up all three wickets he's on a hat trick Vern he's on a hat trick it's going to be a big hat-trick too, if he gets it. It would be the first hat-trick of this 2024 Rising Stars Under-15 Championship. Started a bit slowly, did Khan, in terms of his radar. But since that first over, a successful one at that, he's been on the money. He's been threatening almost every delivery here. What can he produce to young Badri? As we said, Arif Khan on a hat trick. So Trinidad has lost um, Jerome, Richards, and Maraj. Yes. Top order gone. Blown away. Mohammed is on two third. LBWs. Actually, one LBW and two balls. Beautiful. Oh, well played uh, by Young Badre. On the money once again. Yeah. In the right area, just outside that off stump. So, Khan doesn't get the hat trick, but that's okay. He's got three to his name. And he'll be searching for more. Like the look of him, he's tall. He's maybe about 14 years old and growing still. Delivers from high as well. Garner's shrinking this uh, slip cordon now. We've got two slips. Adrian Etmeyer has gone to the second slip. That one sort of undone him there, Badre. He was caught in, he was swinging, tailoring in. He was looking to get an expansive drive, but had to just relax himself. And what I like about him already, just looking at his action, maybe as the game progresses, we can slow it down and just have a look. Is that braced front leg upon impact? Let's have a look at that again here, Vern. And he completes his action. Completes it, comes right over the top as well. 
So they must have heard us now, Manny, because they brought the mid on up very close. Well, and then maybe it would be the size of Badre. They may be saying he's not strong enough to hit the ball down the ground. Also, they would have removed the top order. You know this Trinidad team would be under a bit of pressure, maybe not in their most positive mode at this stage. So just looking to squeeze them at this point. Going back to the conservative rule, naughty shot. Naughty shot. They pull the second slip out, put the short mid wicket in, put the mid on in the mid off back. So they gave him the gap there and he fished at it. There was no feet movement, just the hands. Good carry through to wicket keeper Mohammed. So will Mohammed. He's looked quite sharp so far here this morning as well. Full driven. Can't find the gap though. Young he's Badri. He's shown here. When he said he was leaving. I think he left on Tuesday. He did? Oh, he missed the game, man. He, if he was here, man, he would be he'd be all over the boot. We know he'd be here at this <laughs> point in time. Sean, good morning to you. Bet you he's watching though. Good ah, you know you, 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 you know that for sure. The delivery once again. Outside that off stump. Good leave. Good cricket all round from these youngsters. The end of that can over. Maiden. A maiden. Score remains on 17. So he backed up that previous over in which he picked up two wickets with a maiden. Young Khan. Good stuff. 17 for three. So far in power play one, it's been all Guyana so far. But the Trinidad batters have looked quite good. They've gotten some good deliveries. Punch through the offside. Found the gap. Won't go to the boundary. It'll be pulled back very quickly. That's what I mean. They've showed some fine technique so far. Trinidad batsman. Looks like Zachariah Mohammed. He looks very organized. He's a vice captain. Time sweetly off the back foot. We saw that back foot uh, defensive shot earlier. This time just extending through the extra cover region for two runs. Be following the IPL Mali? Not that much, you know. I, I actually haven't watched the game. I did see that uh, that's Sunrisers. Actually, this one's gone through. Mohammed didn't Ex bounce. Yeah, Kepler. And somebody could be in trouble. Somebody could Confusion. be in trouble. Wrong oh. end. Wrong end in the end. Yeah. Well, that's life. Think somebody's injured also for the guy now. Looks oh, like, no, looks like Ali Young Khan. Yeah, Arif Khan. This one didn't bounce. Yeah, but the keeper was also poor him himself too. Yeah, poor technique from him. And yeah. actually Young Khan slipped as we can see there. Yeah. Just slipped. So he's oh. That could be quite nasty, to be fair. I hope he's okay. Slipped when he went down the to... The physio. She's running. Will she get there? She will. You think she will? Yeah. No, she's got to stop. She will get there. just depends on how long... Uh, how long she takes to get there. She might need a golf cart, <laughs> Mali, to get across the ground. <laughs> but she's running. This would be... She's got in her steps here today very, very quickly, but she's really... Getting on there. Khan is up. Actually, that's fantastic to, to see he's up on his two feet, young yes, Khan. Yes. The benefit of youth, Vern. Of course. 14 years old. Just bounced up. It looked quite nasty, to be fair. That foot stuck in the turf. Slid. Still managed to affect the save. He looks like he's fine. Just having a few refreshments. If you got three wickets, Mali, you must be fine. Yeah, well, you, know, you you don't you don't want to come up. He's looking for five. For yeah. he's he's looking for five. <laughs> <laughs> you you are small, Mali. You know what it is. You you get in there. You trust me. You get excited. You want five. You're not coming off. You know you don't want that ball come off. You're gonna play through that pain. Zachariah Mohammed, though, he's looked quite good for his 15 from 13 deliveries in the situation. The ball swung around. It's been quite sunny here. Feels looking fantastic, the outfield. But so far, it's been quite bowler-friendly conditions. 
and the Guyanese bowlers have given the ball every opportunity to swing, bowling that full length. So good execution as well from them. I see my young can still down on the ground. Don't want the physio to go too far because maybe he might have just twisted his ankle. Mali still just getting through that pain area. It's fine. I just saw him bounce. Just stretching. Stretching out that left leg at the moment. We'll young see, can. We'll see what happens when he bowls the next over. Mm. That will be critical. It's the benefit of youth. Uh, 14 years old. Taken three wickets already. Swing. Full Once toss. Again. Squeezed away. Backward point is deep. And they've been fantastic in the field so far. They put their bodies on the line, these young Guyana, Guyanese fielders. They've been sharp to get to the ball quick along the ground score goes up to 21 for three badger goes to two we say good morning to the folks who tuned into the cricket west in this youtube channel skiddy type isn't he young lewis that one didn't swing he's really making an effort to get the ball to in swing you could tell that that is his strength yeah that's his stock delivery you can see him really working on it i played zachariah muhammad looks very 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 organized yeah he's got a lot of time as well doesn't he seems to have a lot of time at the crease presents a full face more often than not looking to play straight in the v so good morning to Anthony Gray, the big Anthony, and Hamlet Mark. Lovely shot by Mohamed. Beautiful, good cricket. Good cricket all around. Recognized the singer right away, didn't he? And he called but his partner. You heard the communication there between the pair. Yeah. And Griffith was, was a bit deep, too. And that, that was impressive so far. Thought he didn't attack it quite as hard as he could. Don't think he could have stopped it, Mali, if he did. Because no. he was almost going to his, yeah, his it's right all about side. Attacking yeah. at the end of the day, coming forward, forward, not waiting for the ball to come to you. That's what I think you he was see. more or less surprised that Mohammed was running as well too. Mm. Can't be surprised. Got to be in the game. Mm. Twenty-two for three. Now brings Badre back into strike. Roberta Badre. Nothing should surprise you on this cricket field. These young men have been. Well up for it here this morning. Both teams support in the crowd as well. Fantastic atmosphere here at the CCG. End of that over from Lewis. 22 for 3. Yeah, so after losing, you know, the, the, the what you would say, the, the top order. First, mm. we would have had Jerome, Maraj, and Richards. They all back in the hut. All for naught. Arif Khan, the chief destroyer. Yeah, he's been on the money. He's been almost when you saw him bowl that second delivery, you almost thought that you were in Pakistan because mm. you got those young bowlers who were tailoring um, at the stumps. Just good to see the talent that's on the show. We're only just getting into this tournament. We've already identified at least four or five young medium fast bowlers. That's a big oh! Thought I heard something there. Beating outside the off stump was Badri. Extra pace again from Khan. Completes his action every time, Mali. I mean, beautiful rhythm. And that inward movement again, this time off the pitch. Just a bit of C movement. Just proving to be a real handful for the Trinidad batters here. Just conceded four runs in his three overs. And as we said, picked up those three wickets as well. Yeah. One thing about him, Mali, is, is, is he gets close to the stump, gets wide of the crease. So he's, he's really understanding what his role is here. 
That's his 19th dot ball that he's bowled for the morning. So he's attacking the stumps. He's got yeah, you're right. 100%, Vern. And he's not afraid to bowl a, a, a bumper. That one, he tried to really test him. Well played in the end by Zachariah Mohammed. I think what's quite encouraging to see from him as well, he seems to have quite a repeatable action, doesn't he? Seems to do the same thing over and over. And he's confident. No frills action as well. Quite a simple action. Going through the corridor. Everything going in the right direction. Oh, shot again this time. Oh, wide signal by umpire Shekels. That was a bit harsh. Yeah, that was. In my opinion. That that was. That was a fantastic shot delivery. I, I, I thought so too, Mali. Mali. On the money. Mm. Going for the grill. And that's why I'm saying we have to implement the two bouncer rule into our competition. Under 15, under 17, under 19, women's, men's. Yeah, we, we see it in the IPL. Let's put it in the Caribbean as well. Yeah, you don't necessarily want to legislate that aggression out of the game. Inward movement, pad first. Oh! think it might have been just going down Mali. Oh, I'd love to see that again. Maybe an inside yeah. edge. Let's have a look. What do you say, umpire Vern? I think it might have been going down. If he didn't nick that Mali, that is close. <laughs> if he didn't nick that, that is close. But umpire Shekels will be in the best position. You think it'll be the height? I don't think height could come into play there, to be fair. Young Badri, quite small in stature might have been just rising going over maybe on the bounce from uh, can can's height that's what maybe might have fooled shekels badger he'll have to come through this period yeah. good movement again yeah. this time through the air yeah so testing stuff once again from khan he's only into his fourth over it'll be interesting to see how long Captain Hetmeyer keeps him in the attack. We saw, we saw Freighter and Robinson the other day bowl, what, six Te apiece? Yes, they did. The partnership is 19. Uh, Mohammed, he's been the main destroyer. Oh, hold him! <laughs> he played right around it. He was shaken up by the short delivery. He got an in-swinger, played it down to mid on, and then the next delivery... Went right through the gate, and Arif Khan is on a roll here. Deja vu once again for Arif Khan. Inward movement. Starting outside that off stump, tailing in, seam as well, through the gate, extra pace. Just doing badgery completely. He had to go. Look quite composed as well in his little innings. But he's been cleaned up as well by Khan. Khan picks up his fourth. Look at those figures, Vernon. Remarkable figures. Four overs. S four wickets for just six runs. Take a bow, young man. Arif Khan. It's not Ali Khan. It's Arif Khan from Ghana. Under 15. And he is one that we could put on the leaderboard and says he's been the number one bowler joining Robinson and Freighter. In the fast bowling attack. He's really demonstrated that he's ready. Good skills again from Khan. Everything based on that line outside the off stump. Extravagant movement in late as well. Done for a bit of pace. And Badri had to depart. Fantastic, fantastic seam and swing bowling on show so far from this Guyana, uh, uh, Guyana team. It also now demonstrates, Mali, that the delivery fo before, appeal for the leg before. It was close. It was very close. We almost saw this coming. He was just honing in on that area. LBW all bold, threatening the stumps, threatening the pads. Not so much the outside edge. So we got a change in bowling from this end, Mali. 104 yeah. on his back. Yeah. Parmeshwa Ram. Meshra Ram. He too comes swinging. Starts with a wide. In swing again. Yeah. From Ram. 
medium fast. Bowler. Zachary Mohammed on strike. Twenty four for four. Trinidad and Tobago in trouble. In fact, it should be 25 for four. First delivery was a wide. And we have a massive contingent of supporters from Trinidad and Tobago on the left side of us. They are here in their numbers. So they've almost been stunned into silence based on proceedings here within the first eight overs of the match, Vern. 25 for four, as we said, Arif Khan ripping through this Trinidad top order. Mohammed just losing his shape there, caught in no man's land. And I think he's absolutely key to Trinidad posting a total in which they could be competitive. Well, you have to find somebody to bat with him. Just needs a partnership. He's looked quite good. The biggest partnership is the one that was just broken just a while ago. Pick that he yielded close to over 20. And the score is 25 for four. They played. They played, young man. Ram. He's got to be backing up. Got to be looking around because Mohammed is a very busy player. As you said, well played, presenting that full pace of the bat again. Mohammed, 17 from 22. Just needs to continue batting here. Just needs to bat time. Wide delivery. Bernal Joseph just getting into the right position. Signaling to his colleague Donald Shekels that expected to have two legal deliveries in the over. It's been a guy and a team exerting all the pressure here, even within this first power play. Now we've got no slips. Vern, so quite a heavily packed. Offside field. Played. Just there. Good single, good single, good single. Good rotation of the strike. I like. I love Zachary Mohammed. I like his approach. Looks like a very organized cricketer. Goes up to 18 and the score goes up to 27. Yeah, that was well played. Good intent from Mohammed. Just a firm push. Once again, presenting that full face. So I don't think he's going to go into his shell. He's just going to continue playing his natural game. Ramthal facing his first delivery. Good finish lap from Ram. The end of his first over. Still two to go in this first power play here between Trinidad and Guyana. 27 for four, Trinidad and Tobago. Including three knots and a two. Just one player in double figures so far. Mohammed with 18. Say a happy up there to my brother Ricky. In St. Kitts and Nevis. Is that your brother, your, your, your biological brother? Yeah. Okay. Ricky Springer. Ricky Springer. Can mm. again to continue hunting a five for here. Flipped away beautifully, two square leg for a couple of runs. And good cricket all around. So far, young Mohammed has looked the most competent dealing with this in swinging ball so far. That one he just allowed to swing, clipped it away behind square for a couple into the 20s now.
Goes shot, pulled, swivel pull actually. Goes into that wide fine leg boundary. As we said, young Mohammed looks a very good player indeed. This time off the back foot, just used the pace of Khan, helped it away. Another boundary to him. He moves to 24 now of 26 deliveries. And he's given the Trinidad and Tobago contingent something to shout about. Lovely cricket shot, Mali. Fantastic cricket shot indeed. Quite a stylish looking player, isn't he? He is. Zachariah Mohammed. Love to see him bat for as long as possible here. Well, that's from a Trinidad perspective. Once again, just allowing the ball to swing, playing it late, timing it quite nicely up to that mid-off region. This one looks a real player here, Vern. Yeah, Arif Khan. We're going to have to dismiss him. He's looking good, looking good. And one thing about him, Ali, is that he's kept his composure. Um, he's not afraid to play shots. He's not gone into a defensive frame of mind. I mean, the ball has been there. He's played his shots. He's hit two boundaries so far and one six. Within yeah. that little short period. What a six it was as well. What a shot that was. It was off of Emmanuel Lewis. He took ten out of that over. Squeezed the way outside that off stump. Yeah. And the transfer of his weight was very important there. So Young Khan had given away six runs within his first four overs. He most exp it, most expensive. Six, yeah, he's already <laughs> given away six. Yeah, most expensive so far. Emmanuel Lewis, his over was also expensive. Can he come back well, Khan? Ooh. Can Taylor in at those, those feet, Mali. <laughs> Over completed. Magnificent spill by the young man. Four for 12 at the end of his five. Right up there. Jerome Nott. And this person with the scoreboard, they ran away very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. Didn't give us the time. 33 for four, nine overs bowled. Trinidad would still be feeling fairly confident, though they would have lost those four wickets early with Zachariah Mohammed at the crease. I think they go as far as he would take them here this morning, especially in this innings. Has to bat for as many of those 42 overs remaining as possible. It's going to be Ramthal, though. Ramtahau. Driven up to cover. And a good sound off the bat. Ramtalal. Shaheen. We're in the number 74. He's a knot. So he'd want to just spend some time. Spend some time at the crease. This is just only the tenth over. Tall. Very upright stance. I think all Guyana bowlers need to be as disciplined here in this situation. They've already ripped out the top order. Just four deliveries remaining in this, the first power play. Then they'll have the ability to spread the field. Not sure I would, though. I'd keep the pressure on. This one's flicked. Oh! <laughs> Went to the side rather than coming forward, I think. Maybe took him a bit of a time to pick that one up. Have to catch that. I think so as well. Chance goes a begging. Have to catch that, Mali. It was in the air for an eternity. This one's flicked away to that square leg region. Yeah, just didn't seem to pick that one up. Got to catch that. Got to catch that. Thirty-five for four. Ramtalal is off the mark. Oh, he's looking to get aggressive now, Mali. Uh, he thinks he's off the mark now, so it's time to play some shots. 
I think, Mali, that I don't think, I think we might see Adrian Hitmeyer from the CIU Road end too. He also bowls some medium pace mm -hmm. as well. And with the, 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 the conditions ripe here for medium pace, Ghana will be looking to try to put the pressure, keep the pressure on Trinidad and Tobago. They're on top, 35 for four. Wide delivery, make it 36. I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, young Hetmeyer would have been calling into senior Ghana four day trials earlier in the year. He's been scoring a lot of runs in Ghana. I want to say good morning to Ravi Etwar, who I think is also supporting him with the E4 brand as well. So he's been a good prospect, is a name to look out for. Despite that missed chance, Mali, the Ghana ground feeling has been excellent so far. Yeah, it has been. They've been quick on, along the ground, they, as we said earlier. Not afraid to put their bodies on the line as well. Saved runs along the boundary, but they've also been like whippets in the, in the inner ring. This one goes across the line, does Ramtahal. So over comes to an end. And at the end of over number 10. Do we have it right? Yeah, 10. They're 37 for 4. And the young Zachariah Mohammed is on 24 from 30. He's the one standing here. Strong still. Look like they're going to be continuing with Khan. Khan. I like this move to be fair, especially with Ram Tahal on strike. Yeah. Young Think Mohammed seems to be the one batter who has managed the threat of Arif Khan more consistently well. And I think his technique will be tested here, Mali. It will. Khan can get one in the right area here with just that inward movement once again. Could be in business. The emergency feelers for the Guyana team, they're very busy all around. Full toss. Not been able to put that one away. Made good contact, though. Barbados under 15 against the Leeward Islands. Uh, 57 without loss over at Liberta. Beautiful boundary to the chairs of the Trinidad and Tobago team. Yes, yeah, scythe the way through that offside by Ram Tahal. His first boundary of the morning. Over pitched from Khan. It was interesting to see there as well, Vern. No swing. And we know that these white balls, these Kookaburra white balls, tend to swing for the first 10 overs or so. Barbados are 65 without loss in the first 10. So they've gone hard at the Leeward Islands attack. This one is this one. High. I think he's hit. Doesn't carry top edge. Went hard at it, did Ram Tahal. Yeah, Arif Khan is saying, come on, somebody could have come off and got the one. He really wants a five of Mali. Yeah, he's really hunting that five. Go short this time. Probably recognizing maybe this ball not quite swinging the same way as it was earlier in the match. Just a few overs ago. Test out that short length. So he's still creating chances here is Arif Khan. Wide delivery. Good take by the keeper, Mohamed. Yeah, apart from that one blemish that we saw earlier, he's been quite sharp. Has Mohammed. 43 for four.
played quite competently again off the back foot from Zachariah, making good contact as well. Looking to play straight. He's looked quite good here for his 24. Can he keep going? How long can he keep going for? Oh, shot. This one's gone high. Gone! Khan picks up his, his fifth wicket here this morning. We were just saying Zachariah Mohammed was looking so proficient, especially off that back foot. Arif Khan goes sharp, extra pace, tucks him up, top edge. Wicket keeper comes round. Halfway through now for the Guyana under 15 team here at the CCG. 43 for five. Still one delivery to go in this 11th over. What can we say? This support stunned into silence. Well, the messages that have been coming out from the Trinidad and Tobago camp has been, we have a lot of overs to go. Just bat the overs, keep batting. But Arif Khan, he's got other plans. He's got a Fifer here. Yeah, and just a different mode of picking up wickets, recognizing maybe that this ball is not quite swinging the same way. Testing out that shorter length, catching Zachariah Mohammed on a ways. He had to go for 24. Played quite well for that 24. I look forward to seeing a bit more of him as this tournament progresses as well. Who we but got here now, Mali? Raid Ali Khan? Raid Ali Khan. Mm. But so Big far, number. the only Khan that matters is Arif Khan. Is Arif Khan. Trinidad stunned into silence. Ooh, leg by signal that hit them very, very hard. Leg buys. He was rushing him there very quickly. Over completed. 11 overs bowl, 44 for 5. Look at those figures. 5 for 19 from 6 overs. And to be fair, you've got to keep him going, Vern. He has to. He, he has, has to come back. He has to bowl for as long as possible here. For at least another couple. He's been an absolute handful for Trinidad and Tobago team here. Gonna be spin. Looks like it's gonna be spin introduced. Gilbert Griffith. Hundred and two. But I'm wondering. like with his left arm orthodox so spin being introduced here it's got long on and long off on the boundary Deep mid wicket. Backward square. Slip. Backward point. Cover. Extra cover. And started a good delivery. Catching Ram Tahal on the crease. But So they've spread these fielders early. Maybe just giving Griffith a bit of cover here in his first over. I'm a little surprised, Mali, that they've got long on and long off. Because this is the first over of spin. But I think they're, they're almost like you've given away singles. Guyana on top. And we've seen this even with the senior team. How would have brought the middle on and the middle off right up. If he wants to go, let him go. Aerial, oh, spin has done the fielders as well. 
for a second I thought he was going straight to extra cover. In fact, it hit the turf and spun away from the fielder in that cover region. Let's have a look at this again. Just think he's just bowling a look a bit too wide, Mali. Yeah, just peeled off that outside edge. Fielder trying to. So it's aerial. That's where you lead the mid on and the mid off right there. You gotta be inside the 30 yard circle. They're just too deep. Kinda have to understand they're on top. Yeah, especially with Ramtao. Just 11 deliveries he's faced. Mid on and mid off. Right, Ali. Right up. Just four deliveries and you've, they've still pushed mid off and mid on back. Looks like Long on comes into the circle into the mid on position. Long on. Long off stays on the boundary, number 69, Henry. Can't see him hitting the ball down in that, that area, Mali. Yeah, it's ultra defensive here. And I think this is where the coaching staff and the backroom staff come into, come into play and also show their metal. Not only their metal, but their tactical awareness in their nose. As we see now, just a few coaches coming out. These are scenarios that these young guys should have al already been through to recognize this situation, but still a learning curve. As we see a few messages just being passed now from, uh, looks like the coach to number 69, Henry, just in terms of those field placements. So the end of 12, Mali, 46 for five. There have been some 53 dot balls bowled for the morning. And uh, uh, just when the spinner came on, Griffith, Gilbert Griffith, thought that somebody missed a trick. You can't have long on and long off. They would have easily had a wicket. Um, they could have been well 46 for 6 as well as it could have been dropped. I'm saying you've got to be able to keep that pressure on at all times. Don't take it off. Not because it's the end of the power play and you've got the ability to now spread those four fielders. Means that you have to. Situation of the game as you said. Already, already, already halfway through this Trinidad and Tobago batting lineup. It's going to be another bowling change, though. I think they've lost their best batter. The captain is now coming into the top, Mali, Adrian Etmeyer. To be fair, I would have given, I would have given Young Khan one more. One more from Khan. One more. Especially with Ali Khan on strike. You'd have been tailoring at those pads. He's proven, he's proven to be too much for the top order batters. I would have backed him here in this situation as well. But it's going to be Hetmeyer. Maybe he can provide it. He's called himself into the attack. He's maybe got the golden arm, so let's find out. Driven to cover. Easy for a couple of runs. What is he, the nephew of Shimon Hetmeyer, they said? Yes, the nephew. Mm -hmm. Quite a lot of nephews here. And sons as well. Mm. Nice tournament. Sons of former players. Players. Justin Athenes, Kerry Mento, Stuart Williams, the head coach of the Leeward Islands Hurricanes. Last season, the under 17, we had Wilden Cornwall Jr. Played. Had played. That had some pace on it, Mali. Yeah, he looks to be quite a skiddy type. Ram Talal playing it well down to backward point. And the fielder there, Dowlin. So good morning to Travis Dowlin in Guyana. My good friend Leon Johnson. He was a pretty busy businessman. Kenny steers it down to third man. It's an easy single. So Ram Talal has, has grown in confidence, Mali. Yeah, he has. Did, didn't start didn't start well no i think they've just allowed him though to find a little bit of confidence here especially in that previous over right ali khan every now and again he sort of gives you that inclination that he could get out oh shot Ooh. They don't want to get ill-disciplined right now. Yeah. Got to look good. 
And if, if Hetmeyer understood how Alikan got his wickets, he would know that short ball, that's the wasted delivery. He's got to be attacking the stumps. Well, the good thing about Alikan is he, he established that fuller length to begin with. And then later on, look to test out that pitch and the Trinidad and Tobago batters against that short delivery. That's it. That's a better area. Yeah, that's where you gotta be, that's where you gotta be searching for. He's got to test the defense. It's all about angles though, and at this stage it just seems to be jumping a bit wide of the crease, or at least delivering from wide of the crease. And I think it would be a, a, a mindset of trying to fall away. He doesn't want to get into the danger area. He doesn't want to get too close. Can't worry about that at this stage. Ooh, that's the thing. The closer he gets, he'll draw the right-handed batters into playing those strokes. Let's have a look at it there. Wide on the crease once again. If you think back, we saw young Scott getting very close to the umpire when he, when he was delivering. 50 up for Trinidad and Tobago in the 13th over. 50 for 5. Not really aiding in his accuracy. Off stump line, bowling in between wicket and wicket. Once again, they outside. Yeah, too many things, Hetmar. Hetmar trying too many things. Got to keep it simple. Got to keep it simple. I think the mid-off, though. I think the mid-off is just too wide, Mali, for Hetmar's bowling. He's a captain. He's got to look at that. You got the extra cover in the mid-off doing the same thing. They're almost in a line, and as you rightly said, you got to get your angles sorted out. Fifty-one for five at the end of thirteen. The end of that Hetmeyer over, as you said, decent enough first over from him. It's probably has to hone in on that fuller length. Arif Khan five for eighteen. He's been the star boy. In case you've just tuned into the West Indies YouTube channel, star boy of the tournament so far. Young and aspiring, young fast bowler. Mid off, long off goes a bit wider this time, and still on the boundary though. Probably thought they would have brought him up into the circle. Right, Ali Cannon strike as well. New batter. Bold Bold him. He played around a straight delivery, right? He never looked in control. It was Ramtahal, actually. Ramtahal, he's just a lapse in concentration, Mali. He was trying to get fancy and missed it completely. A wicket that Trinidad and Tobago didn't need to lose. Yeah, just missed that one, to be honest. Had a look at the pitch, not sure what he was having a look at. Gilbert Griffith picks up his first. A six down now for Trinidad and Tobago. Spin picking up the first wicket here. It's first wicket here today. Six wickets, Mali, inside the first 15 overs of play here yeah. this morning. Still being quite defensive as well with that long on, long off on the boundary. Trinidad and Tobago, 51 for six. These are the little things you, you want to see from the coaching staff being passed over to these young players they themselves should understand and recognize the situation of the match but if they don't
So welcome back after the drinks break. Trinidad and Tobago are in trouble. At the coolest credit ground, the defending champions Trinidad and Tobago, 51 for 6. In the start of over number 14, Arif Khan. In case you've just joined our YouTube channel, he's been the man. 5 for 18. Griffith. Squeezed away down to the third man area. And they get an easy single. Off the mark straight away is the new batsman. Aaron Mohammed. The score in the meantime goes up to 52 for 6. But the star of the day, the star of the tournament so far, Arif Khan from Guyana. Right arm fast bowler. And Vern, I don't want to be overly critical here, but we've just come out after a drinks break. Saw the coaching staff having quite a few words with the Guyana team. New batter at the crease in Aryan Mohammed. And they start with both long off and long on on the boundary. How, d how do you explain this? I think somebody's missing a trick. Even the slip, Mali, is just wide. He's in no man's land. Down the onside. Got to get the, the, the technical staff four wides. There's just something just off. You got to be able to, you know, cement these things. It, sometimes I find Mali at, the, at this level, the coaches concentrate on so much net practice rather than the, the, the classroom work of teaching the youngsters the game. The match situation as well. They just have them practicing, practicing. Oh, let's go to practice. Oh, let's go to practice. Got to be able to sit them down in the classroom and teach them the game. Well, that awareness, obviously, you'd want the players to develop that themselves over time. It's about game scenarios, as Jason just reminded us. Could give you a classic, Mali. Leeward Islands against Windward Islands. They were their last game, and the coach wanted to practice the next day. Griffith over comes to an end. And the score in the meantime at the end of 14. Trinidad and Tobago under 15. In this cricket, Rising Stars under 15 championship being hosted by Cricket West Indies. 57 for 6. Yeah, you've got to be putting these young players in the best positions possible to be successful. And at 57 for 6, Arian Mohammed had yet to face a delivery. It's just hard for me to fathom that a backroom staff would allow such a thing to happen, to be fair, especially after a drinks break. Having, I'm sure you would have been having those conversations. If you weren't, then <laughs> I don't know what to say, Vern. But 57 for 6 has still been all guy in here. Don't want to be overly critical, but you'd expect that. This is what we want to see from our next generation of West Indian talent. A better line from Hetmeyer and Lent as well. Right, Ali Khan. In fact, right, Ali Khan is on the non strikers, and it should be Aaron Mohammed who's facing. Hetmeyer just looking to uh, adjust his line there. Chosen to go around the wicket now. It'll be interesting, especially with the action that we've seen him have, how he manage this change in angle. Skipper of this guy now on the 15 team. Does quite well, actually. Maybe he's more comfortable uh, from, from that, for what we just saw there, the presentation. He looks more comfortable coming around the wicket. Seems with that action, it seems a lot more comfortable bowling to left-handers. Yeah, let's see how he'll come back. He's got three dot balls already. Hetmeyer. That's close. He's out. Close. Oh. Is he not out? That's a 
tight one once again. Jason, show me that again. Full in length, tailing in on middle and leg. Caught on the crease, probably just missing. Just, just missing. Good decision from umpire Donald Shekos. Just missing, just missing. And he's had quite a couple close ones already, has Shekos. Just missing. It's not far off, though, Mali. No, good area, good decision, though, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, he's got to come back under the stumps. He's, he tried to go wide. He's got to come back under the stumps. He's tailing at those pads. Just remember what Arif Khan did. He continued to attack those stumps. And every now and again, the Trinidad and Tobago batsmen seem to just fall into a slum, get caught onto their crease. That's well played by Aaron Mohammed. He's playing up the V. Look at the scoreboard, Mali. Makes a sorry reading if you're a Trinidad and Tobago. Under 15. Fan. Three knots and a two. 24 the top score so far. 15 Cut. overs. Finally bowled. 57 for six. And we were anticipating a raucous atmosphere here this morning. But so far. It's still raucous. The Guyana team and Arif Khan in particular. Has just quietened. That support of the Trinidad and Tobago team. Still can't get this field placing worked out. I'm, 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 I'm kind of be bemused. They must know something that I don't know. 57 for 6. Well, Griffith is bowling quite slow and tossing the ball up. But he's been very accurate. He's been on the money. No real turn. Keeping it very simple, yeah, you know. On the young man. He's been told to toss it, but you know, which is which is not bad at this level. Just above the eye line, you never know. Right, Ali can might have a go. He's contented to come forward. He understands. He's looking at the scoreboard. But just looking at the setup of a right, Ali can here. If he gets the right length. I think he'll dispatch it over midway. Yeah, he's looking more on side as far as I'm concerned. Protection being on the offside here in long off and that deep mid wicket on the onside. And, and that's why the importance of the, the loss of Zachariah Mohammed is so critical to the Trinidad and Tobago team, Ali. Because he was looking to score. You have to stop that, Gilbert Griffith. That was lazy. Yeah, you got to show more commitment to stop that one. You have to stop that. That's just too easy. Just allowed him a single. Allowed Ali Khan to get down the other end. Aryan Mohammed to face up now. Two left-handers at the crease. In fact, no, right hand and left hand. Aryan Mohammed driven on the ground. Overcomes to an end. 16 overs ball, 58 for six. Good steady stuff this from Gilbert Griffith. Not trying too much as you said, just keeping it simple, bowling in between wicket and wicket. They've already got this Trinidad team behind the eight ball, 58 for six. 34 overs remaining, still a long, long way to go. But will the Trinidad team have the wickets in hand? And the capable batters at the crease in which to post a defendable total here at the CCG. It's amazing as to what the mindset would be. Hetmeyer back over the wicket now to the right hander. Goes yeah. past the outside edge. He's getting excited himself too. Yeah, just drawing Ali Khan into that stroke. Wide of the crease again. Good line though. Tighter line on that off stump from Hetmeyer. I think the keeper has to take a, a step up. 58 for 6. Hitmeyer into his action, into his work. This is his third over. I was recapping Mali as to when this tournament started. It was sponsored by Carib Cement. It was also sponsored by Clico mm. Insurance. Um, I think it's something that 
Cricket West Indies will have to seriously begin to work on and get in some sponsorships for their, their youth tournaments, be it the under-15, under-17, under-19, sort of ease some burden, financial burden off of the territories and the board. Wide delivery by Hetmeyer. Remember, there used to be under-15 World Cups as well, yeah. not just under-19 World Cups. So maybe it might be something that Cricket West Indies could maybe venture on in and maybe thinking about maybe having an invitational on the 15 tournament mm. in the Caribbean. Because it's something that the ICC has definitely abandoned over the years. I think that now would give opportunities to Bermuda, to the USA, to Canada. You, you know, the Cricket West Indies is responsible for those regions. So you, you create that niche. You might be able to even get a team from Thailand or from... Hong Kong uh, from Brazil, but have an invitational tournament. I think also considering the fact that uh, uh, we do have the CPL, but we don't have a, 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 a Cricket West Indies T20 tournament, I think they should also be looking into having something for the under-19 age group in terms of T20, similar to the PSL Junior League that we saw a couple of years ago. Well, there's a school of thought, Mali, and whether we like it or not, T20 is here to stay. And so the traditionalists who are talking about Test cricket, because I've heard some coaches and some former players saying they don't feel that Joel Andrews should be playing in the T20 tournament. But if you recognize what is going on in world cricket... What T20 is that? Any, any T20. Really? They just feel, yeah, and I'm saying that's the way where everybody's going. They're a minority. I wonder <laughs> who, the, who that person was that told you that. Ball. What was the reasoning given? Well, you, you hear so many reasons, Mali, and this is my reason as a coach, Mali. If you're preparing a player, you're preparing him where you have, you prepare the player for the fundamentals to, he's playing a cricket game. Doesn't matter where he's playing, 10-10, T20, 50 over, test cricket. It's about developing the player's mindset and grounding him, giving him the foundation. That's just my reasoning. And I don't want to limit anybody to say, you only can play test cricket, you can't play T20, you, you can't play this. Cricket is cricket. Yeah, I think, as you said, we prepare them for the 50 over, we pre prepare them for the longer format. But we don't necessarily prepare them for T20. I think we've got to start doing that as well. It's not just the West Indies, you see it around the, around world. the world. Pakistan being that first nation to Th actually that made that move. make that investment in the young guys in that format. What I think he'll do as well is just make for a, 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 a very fertile development environment for young players in that format. Especially introducing them to new skills, new, 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 new skill sets in terms of how they bowl, how they bat, how they... He's out caught behind, is he? Yes, he is. He's out caught behind. Aaron Mohammed goes. And Gilbert Griffith strikes. Trinidad and Tobago, 59 for 7. Yeah, his second, Gilbert Griffith. Just outside that off stump. Just hung the bat there, did Aryan Mohammed. So he has to go this Trinidad and Tobago scorecard, making for sorry reading here at the CCG. 59 for seven now. Still within the first 20 overs here. Just a procession of wickets, Mali. It's just been going, it's like, like a cycle. They've not been able to really get into any conservative real partnerships. Well, it was led by Arif Khan, wasn't it? Chief Destroyer with his five. Griffith has come into the attack. As we said, no real turn on his delivery. He's just bowling more often than not, in between wicket and wicket. And could somebody tell me, Mali, why we... I, I, I can't get it worked out, Mali. Well, he just has me bemused. I'll be playing Trinidad and Tobago from the 30-yard circle. We haven't seen a shot in anger in that region either, have we, to be fair? 59 for seven now. New batter once again at the crease. And he's still got long off uh, on the boundary. This is where I hold the coaching staff responsible, that backroom staff. Oh. 
inside edge there, Aiden Owen. He's not going to hang around Mali. In fact, it would be better maybe to have a, a, a mid-wicket because he's showing you what, what, what his intentions are. Sometimes we wonder why our players struggle so long, or it takes them so long to develop. Not just talent-wise, because we've got the talent, but in the match awareness, recognizing situations. I tell you, part of my concept, Mali, is that we, you know, these young boys, we have the, they're full of energy, and we have them practicing, practicing, rather than teaching them the game. Got to take them into a classroom setting and teach them the game. Wants to oh, kept a bit low, but Owen picks up his first run. The end of that successful Gilbert Griffith over. Two for ten now from his four overs. Look at that, five for eighteen. Arif Khan, destroyer in chief. So Mali, the score is sixty for seven. Ghana have put so much pressure on Trinidad and Tobago. We have had 83 dot balls, and we have almost like a wide open field as if Trinidad and Tobago are 120 without loss. New bowler with a big number. Another centurion on his back, 105, Rivaldo Pereira. Looks like he's going to bowl some off spin. So another Pereira here. Or is it Ramon? Oh no, it's Ramon Perez for yeah. the Harvey Eagles in the senior four day stuff. Yeah. They'll be maybe getting prepared for the next round of matches. He's, he's sent him back again, Mali. This has to be a tactic. He's, he's been maybe told this. Well, he knew he was going to bowl a waste high full toss. <laughs> so that's why. Probably. He's got a sweep on the offside. And he's got a mid wicket. Sometimes we wonder when we see these players a little bit down the line and their development's just a bit stunted on, hasn't come along quite as quickly as their counterparts. This one. Bowling slow though is Rivaldo Pereira. I like his pace. That's a wasted fielder, Mali. Yeah, the wasted fielders everywhere. He's got a deep mid wicket as well. Sixty-one for seven. Saying he's seen some big numbers. Right, Ali Khan, he's just one away from a thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine he's got on his back. I wonder the next time we see him if he's gonna be <laughs> what a what is going on here at the CCG? <laughs> I'm trying to work this out. <laughs> I wonder how he came up with that one. Oh, so Mr. Ali Khan, what number would you like for this tournament? Nine hundred and ninety-nine, sir. What's the significance of that? <laughs> oh my He's faced some 28 balls, so he's got some batting pedigree among him. He's weighing a big number, as Mali said, 999. Huge. I'd like to have I a think that's probably the biggest that's number that's the biggest I've ever that we have seen, seen on a cricket field. Yeah, certainly. Ever. <laughs> so, over number 19 comes to an end, 61 for 7. Trinidad and Tobago winning the toss and batting here. Um, Zachariah Mohammed top scored with 24 and Shahan um, Ram Atal, he just scored 12 and the scoreboard doesn't show good readings at all. Yeah, that projected score, 1-6-1 one, one seems so, so far away here for this Trinidad and Tobago team. So distant. The two powerful cricket nations will produce some Excellent players, Ghana, so Clive Lloyd. I really would like to see the Providence Stadium named after Sir Clive. Bowled him. Bowled him. He didn't know anything about that. And Griffith has gone through the gate. 
So yet another left arm orthodox spinner here for a, a Guyanese team. Young Griffith tossed up. Actually just dropped out of the air quite quickly on the right-handed batter. So another failure for a Trinidad and Tobago batsman here this morning. Eight down now, 61 on the board. 61 for eight. Over number 19, over number 20 just started. Griffith three for 10. It's all happening here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground. Coming out for Trinidad and Tobago, Daniel Holder. Big tall lad. And he looks like he's a left-handed batsman. Left arm fast bowler as well. Looks like a Kevin Cooper. So an opportunity here for young Griffith as well to pick up a five for. He's got a long frame. Three for ten. In his 4.1 overs. Takes a middle stump guard. Bernard Joseph says, that's middle, son. So let's see what happens. If he can maybe strike some big blows here for the Trinidad and Tobago fans. 61 for 8. Griffith. position would you call is he at second slip Mali? is he gonna catch anything there two and a half Jeez. ball goes to him so you might say he knows what he's doing <laughs> every defensive stroke being applauded applauded <laughs> quite vociferously by this Trinidad and Tobago support there you go Driven. There we go. Sweetly. There we go. Will be a boundary. There we go. So it has worked. So he's given them something to shout about here, has young Holder. Daniel Holder. The Daniel could be for the Wayne Daniel, and the Holder could be for the Jason Holder. <laughs> or the Shema Holder. A part of from the fact that he's from Trinidad and they're from Barbados. Well, it's still West Indies cricket. <laughs> so the sweeper now, Mali, goes on to the... So it's like we're trying to save runs here. Thought we'd be trying to bowl out Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, you want them taking as much of a risk to score as possible. This one, he goes across the line. This one just tailing down the leg side. I do like that offer from him, though. He's showing quite a good shot selection so far in his just three deliveries, young Daniel Holder. Intent, intent, intent. And in fact, he was also empowering the game. He said it was going down. Yeah. Going down. Good option. <laughs> just didn't execute. Let's see how Griffith will handle the pressure. He's got two wickets so far in the over. Important. Not, not two. He's got one, sorry. It's important that he plays straight, though. Just like that. Well played, young man. 65 for 8. 20 overs bowled. So Young Griffith halfway through his quota. 3 for 14. Just to let you know that the ICC Men's T20 World Cup coming to the West Indies in the United States of America. 55 matches, 9th edition. The biggest T20 World Cup, the 9th edition. And one of the big games in the United States of America, New York, June 9th, India, Pakistan. Probably one of the biggest games in sport. It's maybe not spoken about in those terms enough. It's going to be a massive game. Yeah, Drake and J. Cole talking about they were bigger than the Super Bowl or as big as the Super Bowl, India and Pakistan based on the numbers, bigger than the Super Bowl. Yeah, in the United States of America, Mali, where you have all those Indians and the Pakistanis. I hope I can get a this loan, Mali. Straight, good contact. Four runs to Ali Khan. He's got to bowl the ball into the surface. So, he picks up his first boundary, faced 30 deliveries before doing so. Moves to six now. 
And now they push the long on and the long off back. Not sure they should. Uh, in fact, they're bringing up one, taking back one. You know I'm saying? You on top. Ghana on top. 69 for 8. Force them to hit the ball in the air. Once again, slow delivery. From Pereira. Trinidad and Tobago fans say keep batting, keep batting. 69 for 8. You can keep batting and get bowled over 70. I think they've got to find a way to score and to score and rotate the strike. Yeah, they still got a lot of deliveries in which to do so. But they've just got to find a way to eco to score in which they can defend. <laughs> 69 for 8. They'll be hoping anything from 130 to 150 if possible. That's a long way from here though. Oh, bit of turn from Pereira this time. And bounce. And you see the problem of having an open field Mali because you, you're supposed to keep Pereira on strike <laughs> 70 for 8 Ali Khan is 7 Holder is 4 leg by signal oh you got a nick did he get a nick onto that? yeah got one He's talking to himself. He's been told to stay there. Overcomes to an end. So, 21 overs bowl. Trinidad and Tobago in trouble. 70 for 8. The defending under 15 champions. In this cricket, West Indies Rising Stars under 15 championship. All to play for here in this big game. Second round of the championship being played in Antigua and Barbuda. Round 1. Remember, round 1 was abandoned because of the weather here, rain all across Antigua. But sun has come out today in all its glory. He can't get a single there. That's too easy. That's just too easy. You remember Trinidad and Tobago won the toss this morning and chose to bat. It's the second time we've seen a team actually win the toss at the CCG. Choose to bat and struggle to post the total. It was the Leewards on Tuesday. Match ended up abandoned. Guyana sleeping. Guyana, the fielders are sleeping. Just too deep. they got to be tighter. Trinidad and Tobago batsman taking some risks there. Leeward Islands got to 133 for 7 from 32 overs. Young Bergen, 67 from 60, 12 fours. Got out at a critical time, Ali, mm. when the rain came down. He batted beautifully. Jose Roberts also batted beautifully. This one's hit hard, high, down the ground. Oh, valiant effort in the end. He won't get there. From Young Ram. He won't get there. But you see, Mali, what we were talking about? Because you've got this feeler here down here. Had he been inside the 30-yard circle, he could have come across, Mali, either one of them, and take a comfortable catch. Well, what we were saying is that if any of the two should have been back on the boundary, it would be the long on, because it seems like young Ali Khan is looking to favor that onside, especially anything from that wideish long on to that mid-wicket region. We haven't seen a ball hit down to that long off fielder so far oh big turn from Griffith got to say well played from Holder in the end wow let's have a look at that one again Jace giving the ball every opportunity to spin here did Griffith this one was tossed up look kept like a little low as well look like the arm ball to Mali oh That was a hell of a delivery. Well played, though. Yeah. You 
Griffiths is growing in confidence now, young Gilbert Griffith. Looking to give the ball a rip into his sixth over, actually. One delivery remaining. I think the fielders in the 30-yard circle got to be sharper. They have to support the bowling of cricket. Five singles off the over so far. Got to be tighter. Oh, it's, that's the arm ball there, Vern. That one just almost going the other way. That natural variation, a bit of extra pace as well. Very good testing over from young Gilbert Griffith. Three for 19, his figures now. 75 for 8, 22 overs bowled. It's been a struggle, it's been a struggle indeed. Ali Kando just growing in confidence. 37 deliveries you'd have faced so far. Just 10 runs, but runs not absolutely key in this situation. Just needs to bat time. And now the long on and the long off have gone back on the boundary, Mali. I'm in amusement. Can't get it. Can't get it worked out. Looks as if Trinidad and Tobago, they're 150 without loss. When they're 75 for 8. It's either the backroom staff haven't relayed the message or these young players are doing as they want. It's the only way to look at it, to be fair. I, well, tend, I tend to believe it's the former. <laughs> well, I think it's, it's like a concept. You're, you're told after this that you just so just put the long on and the long off in and we just go about it. I think a lot of the coaching, especially of these youngsters in the region, a lot of the coaching leaves a lot to be desired, Vern. Just yeah. in this match situation, as you said, it's quite baffling. The tactics, it hasn't come back to haunt them. They've well ahead in this match so far 75 for 8 but you still want to see them employing the right tactics especially in this situation long on and the long off still remains the same just giving away singles well played from holder Taking what the guy and the team are giving him here. He scored quite well, 7 of 10. He's getting the ball to turn, Mally. He is, and a bit of bounce as well. He's okay. tossing it up. Valder Pereira. He's getting the ball to turn. He's turning, turning nicely here. Just got to start it outside that off stump. Just there. Another single given away. He has to stop the ball. And I think that's where they've actually been poor here today. These slow bowlers have been poor in fielding their own deliveries. Just a few too many times they've allowed these batters to just push the ball back past them for a single. Big turn again. Oh. Wide signal. Jason, show me that again, Jason. That last delivery. End of that Pereira over. 23 gun. Trinidad and Tobago, 80 for 8. See, Mali, when you see a youngster bowling, be it leg spin or off spin or you know doing anything, you you, you encourage um, sometimes. Another bowling change. Guyana opted now. They've gone for a Brandon Henry. Another left arm spinner. So yet another left arm orthodox. So why would have taken out? I couldn't understand why Gilbert Griffith came out. He's been the main destroyer of the spinners. He would have bowled six overs already, young Griffith. A long up gets a delivery. 
A long hop gets a delivery. Long hop gets a wicket. Young Henry, his first delivery of the match. Not sure what stroke Young Ali Khan was looking to play there. I could. He, he can't bat all day, Mali, and then just give his hand away. Yeah. Delivery there it was a long up. It was there to be hit, wasn't yeah, it? Yes, he still upsetted himself that he didn't put it away. Nine down now. But he's done his job. 12 from 41. Well, he wouldn't think he's done his job. He'd think that he should be batting still, especially to be dismissed off a delivery such as that. But these young guys ah. are part of the learning curve. 80 for nine now just one wicket remaining for this trinidad and tobago team brandon henry i'm sure he's bowled better deliveries but and not picked up wickets so he'll be happy i could think about that. you i could <laughs> think about you bowling some off spinners yeah i've, I've, I've picked up wickets with worse <laughs> deliveries than that 100 percent 100 percent but listen it's all part of the cricket game right you bowl long hops, you bowl whatever, and you always get wickets. It's not the good ones that get wickets. Exactly. So, first wicket. Oh, he was winding up, Mali. He was. <laughs> he was. He was winding up to that Brandon Henry delivery. Looked like he was going to go for the big <laughs> heave hole there. Anything just above his eye line. 80 for 9. Let's see what will happen. Ganesh Gobin. Can they get to 100 here at least? I ah, dragged that down wide. Just trying too many things. Good to see him getting a bit of turn though. Uh, he's looking at the crease anyhow. I think that's just the, the major problem. He keeps looking down. Slippers from very wide. Too easy. Too easy. The angles. Gotta get hit my eyes, gotta get his angles right. I think that was actually well played from Gobin. Allowed that one to just come onto the bat. Use that pace. So, so two runs. Daniel Holder. He's still there. Outfield seems very quick here. Hmm, as usual. Once you're at the Coolidge Cricket Ground, the outfield is going to be fast. There's no question about that. It's a better delivery from Henry to finish. Successful one for him. Just three runs coming from, from it. 24 overs gone. 83 for nine. And also with 21 extras given away. Things could be even better for this guy on the team. Had they been just a little bit more disciplined. Not being overly critical. Bowled a few wides here this morning. And they maybe could have maybe minimized Trinidad down to you know, take away 20 of those singles, force, the, force some pressure. Trinidad could have been maybe bowled out by now. Another bowling change, another left hand orthodox bowler. I think they're trying to give everybody a run out. Yeah, and Dan VSC Govin. Actually. On our sheet, it says left hand bowler. 103. Yeah, we just got one of those here in Antigua. Yeah, Karim. Yeah, we just got one of those here in Antigua. Yeah, Karim. Henry? Yep. I think he's going to England, Mali, later this, this year. He's getting another stint. In fact, he's going to bowl his right arm off breaks is Dan C. Golden. I think the keeper sort of looked like he rushed that. To, uh, stomp him off. He was, was getting so excited, but Holder didn't leave his crease. He's also bowling with both men down on the boundary, long up and long on. And a mid-wicket as well, too. Yeah, but 
you understand the the mid wicket yeah got a sweep on the offside as well to Mali 83 for 9 it's come right across his stumps there and he's gone that's the end of the Trinidad and Tobago innings Eighty-three all out. <laughs> I'll quickly try to see if we can go through the scorecard, Mali. Let me see if we can pull that up um, very quickly. What a performance it's been, though, from this guy and a team. Arif Khan. Yeah, five for fourteen. Arif Khan, Arif Khan, Mali, Arif. And they're excited. They're going into the dressing room. But this game is not over by a long shot yet. We have seen stranger things happen in a cricket game. Barbados 132 without loss against the Leeward Islands at Liberta, 26 overs bowled. And here at Coolidge, um, we maybe have to go to the West Indies site, Mali. Maybe just pull up the scoreboard because the folks over there are not working with us. We just give the listeners a, a chance in terms of what would have been happening. So in case you're just wondering what's happening, Trinidad and Tobago under 15, the defending champions, have been bowled out by Guyana in this all-encounter game. Giving you a rundown and an idea in terms of what happened. Um, that seems to also be behind as well, Mali. Fine. Yeah, they they almost behind as well. So we got well, a lot. I, of I can give them what I have. Barbados, yeah. Leeward Islands at the Bethesda Sports Ground in Bethesda. Barbados batting first after 26.3 overs are 133 without loss. DJ Wiggins 59 from 74 deliveries, and JKN Hines 44 from 85. So 133 without loss, Barbados batting first after 26.4 overs. But as we say here, 83 all out. We'll take a break now. Join us for the second innings in roughly 10 minutes or so.
Welcome back to the Coolidge Cricket Ground. It's round two of the Cricket West Indies Rising Stars Under-15 Championship. And the news is that in case you've just joined us, Trinidad and Tobago have been bowled out for 83 in 24.2 overs. Their captain, not their captain, their vice-captain, Zachariah Mohammed, he top scored with 24, 31 balls faced, batted for 52 minutes, two fours and one six. But the man of the day, Arif Khan, six overs, one maiden, 18 runs, five wickets, Mali Richards. Yeah, he was special indeed. Used the conditions very well. Uh, bowled that fuller length more often than not, but also had that ability to just hustle these Trinidad and Tobago batters uh, with that shorter delivery as well. So a good prospect indeed, young Arif Khan. As we said, he's been the man of the moment, but he was supported quite admirably by young Griffith with his three for 19 and Henry and C. Gobin each picked up a wicket apiece. So Gilbert Griffin, six overs, no maidens, 19 runs, three wickets. Brandon Henry, one over, no maiden, three runs, one wicket. C. Gobin, two deliveries, one wicket. We're starting here with Aidan Owen. And straight away. We're looking at the opening batsman for Ghana. Just trying to get his number. We've just been unsighted. He's just facing us with his big Ghana jersey. A lot of chatter coming from Trinidad and Tobago. Justin Dowling at the non-striker's end. All right, so Mali's picked that up very quickly. Thank you, Mali. And he's joined also. Wait for a while. Back and across nicely. Again, we still can't pick the number up. Is it 70? We're just, un we're just unsighted. So we really can't see the, the number of the players yet. Not without loss. Two deliveries have been bowled so far. I wonder if it's Brandon Henry Mali, but we'll wait and see. More looks like single they're off and they're running. Good run in that. No, it's a Ram. Ram is the, is the opener. Pameshwa. Pameshwa Ram, so he's off the mark straight away. Now brings Dowling. Justin Dowling. We're in the number 59. With that big number, Mali, that's why we, we took such a long time before we could <laughs> figure out what was happening. 83 all out. 109 dot balls, Mali. Five fours and one six within the Trinidad and Tobago's innings. Round the wicket. Yeah, it was that first over in which Khan picked up the first wicket. And ever since then, they really struggled to recover. At one point, young Khan was on a hat trick himself. Arif Khan bowling from the CIU Road end, he exhibited some good pace, good bounce, swing and seam as well, utilize the conditions here at the CCG to the fullest. Trinidad and Tobago started with two slips, a backward point, cover, mid off, mid on pretty close to square leg, and a wide third man, more or less. Well, it was good to see how he handled that new ball, how he handled that swing, mainly into the right-handers. Got his line spot on more often than not, starting the ball just outside that off stump, opening up the Trini batters, the end of that first over. Pretty decent one from Aidan Owen, one without loss. Bernard Joseph just having a, a conversation with the young man. I want to get your thoughts, Mali. Uh, I think that we should be playing 40 overs for this level. I don't know how you feel. Um, yeah, either way, I don't see much of a problem, to be honest. Um, we're trying to prepare these guys for the next level. So I'm not sure 40 over cricket is played at the first class or this day level, is it? No. No. I was just looking at the development part, really, um, especially for some of them. We look at the Jamaica team. It's the first time that you know 12 of them would have been represented. 
they don't play that amount of cricket in their home territory in, in their school tournament so I, I was just looking at the the mm. pathway mm. Um, coming up in terms of the development stage um, at, the, at the West Indies level sometimes that, that just goes back to the systems you were talking about and developing the right systems because they should have been coming into that tournament having played 50 over cricket regardless of what's going on in Jamaica this is where we all have to get on the same page as well West Indies can't, can't necessarily cater for what's going on in Jamaican sports, per se. Well, in even all territories as well, and I, I think this goes back to having a conversation as to what's happening with school cricket around the region. Um, COVID, yes, would have rocked a number of countries, and you know a lot of priorities would have been pushed back, but we see that you know we have an active track and field program in, in more schools. Lovely take there by the keeper, um, Zakari, Zakari Mohammed, Zakari Mohammed. Got down the onside there very quickly. It was like a jack in the box, Mali. It was so sure, good footwork there to get to that one down the leg side. Both these Trinidad uh, fans bowlers so far look quite pacey. But so far, not the same amount of swing just yet. Left arm holder. He's put pacey, Mali. Another wide again, but I think he's just missing his run. His strike pattern is just not being consistent. The ball's not swinging as well. Starting it a little too straight, young holder. You do expect a little bit of nervousness from these young players, be it with the bat or the ball. said Jamaica they've got 12 new players so got this for Garfield Sobers international cricket schools competition coming up in Barbados that's a competition which will have produced so many outstanding players and I hope that Cricket West Indies would, would send a scout or two to look at that tournament You'll have the under-17, you have the under-19. Got to begin to broaden our, our talent scout scope to move around. Well, that was strange. Left by the left-handed batter. Dowling. Look like he turned him right around, Mali. His feet really didn't... Got himself into... Caught him on the blind side, more or less. So let me look at his stance again, Mali. Look like he's playing around his, his pads. Very, very strange uh, passage of play, that. Let's see if he'll bowl him that same delivery again. He looks comfortable in that area. Normally, left, left handers always look so pretty. Mali Richards himself. He would have dominated. You would have seen him all around the world. Had the privilege of been around Mali from like the under 15 level, 13 and under coming up. So just missed his run there slightly yeah, again. Yeah. The young holder. But he still continued. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he just wanted to get it in. Mm. <laughs> that exuberance of youth once again. <laughs> and it was no matter that, you know, he was going to stop. You know, he just decided, listen, I'm going to go. Uh, I want to just get you this over. <laughs> No swing for him just yet. The one that actually hit on the pad, there was a hint of swing. But I think he was pitched outside the line mm. in the leg stump. That may be what would have saved him. That now swung, Mali. Finally. He yeah. He's got a ball and we rewind and reload. Reload that again. The keeper on the first hip seems surprised. But a bad red first slip. Ooh, that did swing Mali. It did. Goes past the outside edge. So and it was a fuller length too. A better finish to 
the over from Daniel Holder. Three wides in it. Yeah, plus just plus seems a to single. find his groove as the over uh, progressed towards the back and those final two deliveries more in the areas in which he should be looking to pitch the ball, especially here, this new ball within the first ten overs. Tends to swing, Vernon. We saw the use that Arif Khan, and to a lesser extent, even Emmanuel Lewis, he didn't pick up a wicket, but extravagant swing for him as well. It was so interesting, Mali, as you were talking about Trinidad and Tobago maybe getting to 120, 130. Ghana needs 79 in 288 balls. A whole different ball game. They yeah. can get that in singles. In fact, they can walk that. All the time in the world. Once again, just looking to rotate strike. Dowling, sleeping on the non-striker's end. Reacted late. Score moves on to five. Say good morning to Stephen Jacobs. Jakey. That form again, off spinners. Yes, he's got his jewelry shop. With one of the established ones in Ghana. Big weekend this weekend, Mali. Karifta Games. Yeah, in Grenada. Munswat sending two athletes in Tigre and Barbuda with a very big contingent. So too is Sinkits and Nevis. Bahamas have sent a threat message. And when I say threat, they're talking about the athletic threat to Jamaica. I don't know if they're going to lose anytime soon, Mali, because they're so strong, Jamaica. They, should I ask you a question? Are the Karifta games the same time every year? Every day, every year. Same time. That's a set period. It's the biggest junior track and field event in the world. This is where sometimes uh, the administration just harms these youngsters. I was reading in the paper today, Antigua going out in two separate contingents. Because they're a bit late in getting their arrangements together. Every time you hear Karifta Games, Mali. That's why I ask. You know what is happening. You know, right? you know every year this you, time, it's gonna Karifta be Games. It's going to be. It's going to be here. Mm, regardless every. of where in the Caribbean. However long the Karifta has been, if it's 52, 53, Mali, mm. it's always been in that same period, and they use that because of the Easter break and this children coming out of school. So we know that it's a routine. So there's no excuse, really. This one's hammered down the ground. He'll get quite near to the boundary. Ah, beats the fielder into that extra cover boundary. Wide, long off. Just stood tall, did Dowling. And this outfield, as we said, lightning quick, Vernon. Lightning quick. Boundary there. Score in the meantime goes up to 10 without loss. And what is tricky also, Mali, because they're going to Grenada, now, I know if we air travel is a challenge going down into those areas. There's no Liat, and so you have Inter-Caribbean. But most countries tend to organize Mali and have a charter. So I know Sinkitz and Nevis is going on a charter. There could have been a conversation between Sinkitz, Nevis, and Antigua and Barbuda. I mean, this is what we're talking about. We're just a stone throw away. Surely, in our sports budget, there's got to be some sort of money available for our national athletes or national junior athletes they should um there should be a karifta fund in the budget every year and the athletes should be aspiring to get into that fund 100 percent keep letting these youngsters down and i just think mali whether i'm an administrator myself the administrators at the end of, of, of three overs, Mali, 10 without loss, sometimes have to take a lot of blame because they, they, they react late. It's, it's as if you don't know. If you're planning, you have to be planning for the next character, knowing very well in terms of what's going to be happening. Uh, if not, leave the positions alone. Don't run for president, secretary, treasurer, or vice president, knowing that's going to be the attitude towards it. Got to be proactive. But Especially you see in these positions of responsibility and power. But you see, Mali, everybody wants to go to the World Championship and to the Olympics. So we don't feel that we need to pay attention as to what's happening at the Karifta level. But I bet you, Mali, that nobody's going to be missing the plane to the Paris Olympics. Hmm. You mean from the administrative staff, right? All right, there you go. Chef de Mission and everyone else. Even if there's no athletes, a bunch of managers, they'll be going. A bunch of liaisons. 
<laughs> Ten without loss. And I think it's 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 just like a normally that happens throughout everywhere you journey around the Caribbean around the world, you, you almost hear the same outcry taking place all the time. And I'm saying something has to be wrong. If you're in sports administration, you gotta get your act together. It's a business. Sports is a business, it's a billion dollar industry. And we're depriving the youngsters in, in, in some form, shape, or the other. You can imagine your home alley, and you're not sure if you're going to the Crafter Games. You don't know which flight you're going on. You, 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 you're just there. You just don't know. That's not the, the, the mental state you'd want your athletes to be in going into any major championship. It looks like young Daniel Holder, he's just found his rhythm. Well, a Trin little bit here looks a lot better. For Trinidad's sake, they would really want him to, but he's lost his radar again. Yeah. Pulling a wide. That first delivery looked really good. Yeah. But I think and this Carifta meet in Jamaica, Mali, is going to be the biggest one. Over 800 athletes. Every year, it just seems to grow and grow. Yeah. Well, it's close by, and sometimes people walk out, you know what I mean? I think Grenada being the host, they're going to have something like 60-something athletes. Um, the maximum is about 80 something at least. Bahamas, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, they normally work with full contingent so you can understand what's going to be happening. I think this is going to be easily one of the biggest contingents Antigua and Barbuda will be sending to the Carifta Games. Just quickly here, just to compare Young Holder and Arif Khan, both started from CIU Road. Yeah, but I don't think he's completing his action, Yeah, just Mali. to compare them. That's what I said earlier about Arif Khan, which was so good to see in terms of his action being repeatable yes. over and, and over, over the same thing. Here from Young Holder, just seems to have more moving parts. A lot more can go wrong. His strike pattern is, is not consistent either. Obviously, they're not the finished article, so we don't want to be overly critical. But just quick comparison. He completed his action there. Just landing on different areas of the crease as yeah. well. And there's just something that you, you have to tell young bowlers, Mali. How you walk is how you bowl. I mean, if, if, you know, it's, it's broken down as simple as that. Once they understand that, then they'll be able to move. They don't have to try to do anything else. You just get that sorted out. Missed it again there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, every now and again. Because he keeps looking at the crease as, as, as well, too. It's almost like, as you said, Mali's moving parts, his hands, his head, his, everything is alignment. And, folks, we just want you, right? It's an education, it's a master class in terms of what we're talking about. This, these are some of the finer points that the coaches will have to identify at an early age. Because when they get to an under 19 level, Mali, and Mali Richards is a coach, it's going to be pretty difficult to change what is happening. Confusion once again with the running. This time, just lacking the basics of communication. I don't think Dowling is backing up Mali. He's just got his hand back planted into his crease and he stays right there. He doesn't walk. Not Dowling. That this, this time it looked like it was... It was yeah, Ram. It was Ram. Mm. You've got to walk. It, uh, all, all those things that you're being told, you know, because you get cold. Your body's cold, so you're just standing up there. You've got to be moving. Four overs bold, 12 without loss. Trinidad and Tobago contingent. The fans, they have turned out in their numbers here. Didn't get a run out in the first round because rain spoiled the party. Rain that the farmers in Antigua and Barbuda really needed and around the Leeward Islands. Also, the lack of swing so far for the Trinidad bowlers probably just suggests that Guyana. Seamers just keeping that wrist behind the ball for longer. I think you made a very important point this morning. This is the second team that we saw won the toss and decided to back this morning. And struggled. And struggled. Really struggled to do so. I don't think they misread conditions. I think conditions were misread on in that first match between the Leewards and Jamaica. Yeah. I think if the Leewards had to do that again, they'd win the toss and field. This one's hit in the air. But through that vacant mid-wicket region, it's in the air for a little while. Yeah, but in the gap, as they would say. Airily. 
sort of hit the bat very hard to and simply because um, Ram was not into the right position. He was just more or less caught on the crease. He's still trying to rehearse. Got to get deep, especially with somebody bowling you quick. And young Aiden Owen is uh, quite a skiddy type. Well, hustle's on. No real movement on it just yet. Big effort as he gets to the crease. Hope I get an opportunity to see an uh, Adrian Grip, Adrian Hetmeyer. There's been so much talk about him. Is he scheduled to come in at three? I hope he is. We'll wait and see. Once again, just a little hesitation yeah. from Ram. Rami Ali Khan there running in there from cover. I wonder what's the strength in this Trinidad and Tobago bowling attack. Is it spin? So we've seen some good prospects of something that they can work with in terms of their young seamers. It probably is in the spin department. But they don't have the runs to support them. Yeah. But we never know. We're seeing stranger things happen in cricket. But just like the senior uh, Harpy Eagles, again, a Harpy Eagles senior team bowling attack, we mentioned just how balanced that bowling attack was. Here, even in the under-15s, you look at the guy and the team, it's a very, very balanced bowling attack uh, of seamers and spinners. Yeah, based on what we saw on shot today. They got a lot of options. First delivery that was tailoring at the top. It didn't really have the pace. Um, over completed, 14 without loss. A good start, good quiet start as compared to Trinidad and Tobago's under 15 innings. It's a good quiet start for the Guyanese, but. At one time, Mali, they were what? Four for three? Yeah, Trinidad would be hoping for some early inroads here. So they lost their first wicket in that first over, didn't they? The Trinidad and Tobago team. Yeah. And the man, the main destroyer, Arif Khan from Ghana. Six overs, one maiden, 18 runs, five wickets. He was on the money with some 20 dot balls. That's the sort of pressure that he created. Could have maybe ended up with 6-7, Mali. Mm, he's pulled out of the attack. A bit prematurely for my liking. Driven over the offside field. No real timing on that one, though. I don't know if you saw that one. Ali Mohammed. Not Ali Mohammed. Ali Khan. He was running after the ball and he took off his hat. <laughs> took off like Ben Johnson. Crossed the turf. Real nightmare for Zayn Maraj. He wants wickets. Two slips. Gully. Cover, short extra cover, mid on, mid off. Dead ball signal. Sometimes when you're trying too hard, Mali, it just doesn't work out. They maybe just need to relax. Just relax for a moment. And I think the, f the feelers in the 30-yard circle, they have to get a lot more tighter. I think Put some pressure on the Guyanese batsman. Yes, yeah, that small total they were dismissed for. It's just causing them to press here. Ooh. Second dead ball again. Mm. It's just not being able to get it right at all here. Because they know wickets is what they need. They won't be able to bowl uh, 50 overs and <coughs> restrict this team. This game could be finishing 20 overs. Mm. Could be a 20 over game here. They're already on 16 without loss. Well above the required run rate. Goes shorter there, did holder. Didn't quite get off. Look over Dowling. there, Mali. The cricket. Somebody in the taxi is trying to look at the cricket. They're holding up the traffic. So everybody behind is honking their horns. <laughs> Shame the viewers can't see that. <laughs> what they saw was young holder, just young Dowling, just staying a bit leg side ish of these deliveries now. This one's aerial again. Maybe that weight just on the back foot slightly. He didn't lean into the ball. He thought it was. In a standing up position, his hands was just going. Young Mohammed uh, Zachariah, Mohammed only got 24. But he's 
exhibited some sweet timing. Oh, he's a lovely player to look for, Mali. I like him. Two fours and one six. Very stylish. He's got good technique too. I like him. He got back and across. Got that right foot parallel. Young Mirage as well. I'm sure he'll get some runs as this tournament progresses. They both look like they possess some solid techniques. And also, when they're looking to score, don't tend to lose shape. Taxi still holding up. Everybody is holding in to look at the cricket. <laughs> you get so excited every time you pass by a cricket field, man. You always have to stop. It's just something that you think that you will see or you will miss. <laughs> you had to see a young fast bowler or a batsman or something. In fact, any sport, not just cricket. Wickets needed here for Trinidad. See, he's not, he's not leaning into it. Got to get into it. That's a half volley. Got to lean into it. Got to lead with your head and your shoulders. To find the gap. And it's at this age, of these ages, these young men, got to drilling. Has got to. to be drilling these things into them. Muscle memory, muscle memory. To create that muscle memory over and over again. And that is why sometimes, Mali, when you look at our counterparts from around the world, they, they're sometimes so advanced. You know, we, we, in England and in Australia, the, the, the young boys already know how to practice a ramp. They, 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 they know these things early o'clock. Those are drills. That's a constant drill that takes place every day. End of that holder over. Seems to be a little change here. Uh, maybe a new helmet coming out. Looks like a change in now. It's going to be yeah, it's eight a no in to continue. So it's going to be a change of bowler. Not quite. A change in equipment. Yeah, the helmet. Uh, maybe that one. Something looked like he was moving on on his head. Unlike the Leeward Islands, every player have their own helmet. I don't know if it's the same thing in the Guyana setup. Bernard Joseph just coming down to just inquire now. It's got even the over before, I think Bernard had to make the adjustment with him and, and the same helmet. Hope that he can see. Uh, it does make sense changing and he can't see. He's trying to grab some water as well too. So... 16 without loss, 5 overs bowled. They need 68 runs in 264 balls, almost 64 singles. I think that is academic right now. At this stage, not the, not the defense of the title that Trinidad and Tobago would have been expecting. I know the, all the fans here at the CCG, quite a big contingent of Trinidad and Tobago support. I think about over 30 to 35. Easily one of the biggest goals I think that we have seen since we've been doing commentary here. Here at the CCG, that's for sure. <laughs> when it was Stanford, it's a little different. Oh, <laughs> you don't have to call it, you don't have to say that, Mali. <laughs> the home of T20 cricket. When we look at the makeup of what we've seen in the IPL, it started right here in Antigua and Barbuda at the Stanford Cricket Ground. Mm. All of those attractive prizes, a big clock up there, and somebody tells you if you hit the clock, you'd win something. It's just amazing, the atmosphere. But it gave an opportunity to the unknowns. That's a good delivery. That one was just tailing in a hint of shape there into the left-handed ram. Just got the bat down on that one in time. You know, when you look around Malia to the Stanford T20 tournament, you know, it gave opportunities to Montserrat, to British Virgin Islands, to USVI, to Bermuda, um, you know, all around the world, Cayman Islands, you name it. We saw new talent that, you know, would not have been on earth, be earth before. Just probably seeing as we just key in on Aiden Owen, especially his wrist position when delivering. 
seems to be cutting down the side of the ball almost. Look at that again, like a cutter almost. Badly line delivery, paddled away into the fine leg vacant area and they get two runs quite easily. Not sure if it's deliberate or not. He's just running his fingers down the side of the ball. Maybe trying to bow some cutters. Mm. It's a good day to John the Dentist Maynard, Howard Williams, Leswai Weeks. Got a nudge from Leswai. Well, as I tell you, Leswai did say to give you a hail up. Mm. Even Phil Wallace, too. He was listening to our commentary in the first game. So everybody's glued in. Full toss. Whipped away. Won't get to the boundary. They'll get a couple of runs quite easily. And Trinidad and Tobago dismissed for a very paltry score by their standard. 83 all out in 24.2 overs. But think back to the constant threat of the guy in the opening bowlers, Vern. How that ball just swung around. Conditions similar to this. The sun was out in all its glory this morning. Just not managing to get that same movement here to trouble these Guyanese batters. Maybe just a few technical issues. I remember, Mali, too, that Trinidad and Tobago faced 24.2 overs. Um, different style of bowlers with different varieties, maybe not concentrating on hitting the seam that consistent like the Ghana opening bowlers. Just want your fast bowlers with the new ball to give the ball every opportunity, opportunity. to move. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, just running his fingers on the side of the ball. This may be a, a pattern that he has developed. Over mm. comes to an end over number seven, 21 without loss. And we're almost on a roller coaster here. Darwin, seven, Ram, nine. 63 of 259 balls. They need wickets and need them fast. Yeah, the required run rate, just 1.46 for Guyana. Hasn't been an explosive start for them. Both batters face 21 deliveries, Ram on nine. Dowling. On seven, but no pressure whatsoever. No scoreboard pressure, that is. Trinidad trying to G up their team. Mm. Easy like Sunday morning here. Barbados 181 without loss, Mali in 32 overs against the Leeward Islands. That's like massive. It's like the Leewards will be chasing some leather there at Bethesda. Oh, I'll tell you what, a couple of weeks ago when the games were scheduled, I got a few messages out of Barbados in terms of just trying to get a feel of conditions uh, at the Bethesda Cricket Ground. Mm. So the Barbados officials were very proactive trying to determine exactly what conditions would be like at Bethesda so far. Told him it was very good for batting. Indeed it has been. And it's proven to be that way. So you're, you were on the money. Mm. Hope you get a commission for your advice. Almost jacked back onto his stumps there. Justin Dowling. Every now and again, Marie, he finds himself in some problem when the ball lands into that area. Yeah, no feet. Look where that front foot ended up. There, he's got to be looking to come forward. As opposed to just camping out on that back foot. Looking to transfer that weight forward. Doesn't have to have the biggest stride, Vern. It's all about leading with the head. I think sometimes, you know, that footwork can be a little overrated. Especially when coaches say, get your feet your foot to the pitch of the ball yeah but if I actually do get my foot to the pitch of the ball I'm kicking it yeah but how do you get your foot to the pitch of the ball what has what has to happen the head has to go there first along with your shoulders because you everything leads yeah but you can do you can lead with your legs you know <laughs> and your head could be and back you, and your head still back right so the <laughs> head is key the head is the yeah. is the actual heaviest part of your, your body. body where your head goes the body follows 
up as Young Holder goes down. Falls over. <laughs> He's been won for bowling a bumper. And is just struggling for a bit of timing here. End of that holdover. Eight overs gone. Guyana are 21 without loss. Yeah, maiden over there from Daniel Holder. Might be the first of Trinidad and Tobago's innings. Mm. Trinidad looking for early wickets. Can't find anything as yet. Guyana needs 63 runs. For victory. Bowling out Trinidad for that party total of 83 has just afforded this opening pair the luxury of time. Face as many deliveries to, to get acclimatized as possible. This one's drifted down the leg side. Probably just took a bit of pad on the way through. Yeah. Umpire Big Bernard says no wide. Lucky to get away with that one because had he got bat under that, that could have raced away very quickly for a boundary. Yeah, no fine leg, no third man here for this Trinidad team. Two slips, heavy ring field on the offside. I think the captain here, Zayn Maraj, getting very, very, very proactive. As compared to what we saw, Hetmeyer, so they sort of relaxed, you know, the attack. But it's a different mindset because Trinidad, they are seeking to get wickets. Wide delivery. So they decide they're going to bowl to an off stump line. Is it a 7-2 field, Mali? Yes, it is. It's a lot of pressure on this young fast bowler, Aiden Owen. Ball to the 7-2 field. Asking him to go wide of that off stump. Can't afford to get too straight here. Vacant. Big gap in the mid-wicket region. They've got so much balls. They've got so much time that Ghana don't need to do anything foolish. Just need to keep it simple. They need 62 singles of 250 balls. And with the rate at how Trinidad and Tobago is bowling, we already had a wide in this over. You maybe can get it in extras. Just as Mali was talking about, just drifting there. I just like to see a balanced field, Mali. 6-3. Give you that option. Yeah, it was a good delivery actually from Aiden Owen. Full in length, just tailing in. Actually moved quite late into the left-handed doubling. But as we said, big gap in that mid-wicket region, easy single. Played by Dowling. Every now and again, he, he looks organized, but he just needs to get his head position, just pushing the weight forward, advancing. Franklin Stevenson, Milton Small, good morning. Timing the ball quite sweet. He wasn't looking to hit the ball too hard. But also, he was staying in his strokes a little longer. This pair probably just pulling out of those shots. Hence, not getting full value. Probably expect that to come as they get a bit more confident here with conditions. Just seem a little tentative. This one's better timing. Won't get to the boundary. Will be chased down. They'll get two. Looking for three though. Good bat in that. And for a particular reason, Mali, when they're chasing the ball, they they, they take off the hats. <laughs> Wonder if the hats are too big. <laughs> Possibly. 
Not how they make them these days, Mally. Not too many sun hats on show. Or caps. No floppies, you mean. Mm. <laughs> 25 without loss. Also just playing on the move slightly. Ram. Still good batting conditions here. Yeah, actually, another fantastic wicket produced. Good cricket wicket, some in it for everyone. We saw some good fast bowling. We saw the ability to score runs, at least from young Mohammed. Looked like if he could just get through that little period. Did a swing there from Holder. Empire Donald Shekels does not look bad at all, Mali, in this game. No, he hasn't. Had a few, a couple close LBW shots. One of the aspiring umpires from Antigua and Barbuda. I've know. always liked his demeanor, man. Yeah, with his future ahead of him. First time I saw him, Mali, would have been 2018 in a Leeward Islands tournament. In fact, not the first time, but. I came to Antigua and I was very, very, very impressed with his work ethic and how he looked, you know, cool under pressure. Played a bit of cricket as well too, so I think that that has helped. Avoy Knight, who I really thought could have really taken off, he had taken a break. Um, went into politics, he's back out of politics now. Politics? Yes, he did. He, oh, okay. he ran the last election, Mali. Mm. You didn't know that, Mali? As an independent? No, he ran for the, what is it, the DN... Okay. Yeah, yeah. 25 without loss. Now he's the secretary of the Antigua Barbuda Empires Association, so he's got back into it. In fact, Avroy, maybe had he not had that break. Also, his work commitment too, because he was working at Jumbe Bay as well. He was one that was being touted to be up, going all the way. Bernard Joseph has been on the radar here. Here's one clipped away into the leg side height. Um, but Bernard signaling that was a good delivery. So a boundary, Mali. Full toss. Yeah. Put away nicely. Into the vacant, vacant mid-wicket area. Yeah, finally, some decent timing there from Ram. Moves on to 16. And the score goes up to 29 without loss of 10 overs. So, Trinidad and Tobago, more or less you would say, uh, off day for them. Arif Khan, six overs, one maiden, 18 runs, five wickets. And Gilbert Griffin, six overs, no maidens, 19 runs, three wickets. And Brandon Henry, one over, no maiden, three runs, one wicket. And Sigobin, um, Danvir Sigobin, two deliveries. One wicket, 109 dot balls. Trinidad and Tobago dismissed for 83 in 24.2 overs. Spin for the first time for the Trinidad and Tobago team. It's like it's going to be Sean Ram Tahal. Number 74. Yeah. Let's see what he has to offer. Looks like a wrist spinner. Yeah, it looks like leg spin here, based on the field setting. Actually, no. Starts with off spin. Starts with a wide too. <laughs> Down the leg side. It's got the slip. Backward point, point. Cover, extra cover. Mid off. Mid on. Very straight mid wicket. Walks first. This one's. Oh. Poor delivery, but wicket nonetheless. Another long hop. Not sure what shot Dowling was trying to play there. Didn't quite get up as high as he expected. But in the end, just managing to pick out that mid on fielder. So the first wicket down for Guyana with the score on 30. Ram Tahal. But he was not in position, Mali. He was off balance. He is. He, he, there was no balance at all. He had no 
He was not being able to get a proper execution. His left foot just stayed right there and didn't get low to the ball. And, uh, that was just my major concern for him. Not sure what stroke he was actually trying to play. We see this again. Halfway down. Almost like a chip golf shot, more or less. Looking to hit that through the onside. And the big moment, Mali. Is this Hetmeyer coming out? Can't see the number yet. It's Emmanuel Lewis. No, is you're right. So Hetmeyer is maybe going to bat at four. So Emmanuel Lewis took the new ball from this media center. And, and now he's batting one. number three. And he's here in at number three. Yeah, I remember him from last season, Mali. Looks a good little cricketer. Yeah, he's not, not bad at all. He's, he's good in the field. Quite skiddy with the new ball. Swung the ball quite prodigiously as well. Let's see how he gets on with the bat here. No real pressure. That run rate is now just dipped below three. 2.95. Still need 54. So no scoreboard pressure on the young man. He's got a bit of time here. Oh, nicked and through the wicket keeper and that first slip. First slip didn't even react, to be honest. Seemed to have gone really quickly past him. Don't think he was in the actual first slip position, Mali. Had he been in the first slip position, he was taking that sort of wide. And that's what we're talking about, Mali. But it's right. It's still to him. Yeah, look at that. that look, it's, a, it's a simple move. He's trying to cover one and, and two. two. And, and first and second slip, <laughs> isn't he? It's kind of at one and a half. half. He doesn't even make a move, a move to it. It's a simple move to your left quite quickly. And take that. Hopefully it will stick. But the hands weren't anywhere near that one. Chance goes to begging. Got to take those. Got to take those, Mali. Definitely. He's gone a little finer now. Yeah, but it's too late. The horse has bolted. Still think there was an opportunity for him to take that one. Maybe didn't expect the edge to be taken. You but just being in slip, you've got to. You have to. I'm kind of almost a little bit surprised to Mali of the wiki keeper's left foot. It's almost like it's behind the middle stump, uh, more or less. Let's look at it again. He starts on the off stump. But it, it, it tends to just get a little clouded. And he's not relaxed either. Wide. Can't afford to allow these batters to free the arms. Lewis obliges. He'll get quite close to the boundary. In fact, he's gone for a boundary. Gone for four. He flicked it back over. So the fielder got there. And in the end, ended up flicking it over the boundary. Looked like it was holder on that occasion. So four runs added to the total. The second boundary actually for young Emmanuel Lewis. A lot of things happening in this over. Start with a wide, then a wicket, and then two boundaries. And one nick through the wicket keeper and first slip region as well. Just in between them. She's so gotten off to a flyer here, has Lewis. Eight of four. Yeah. Eight of five now, the end of that ram to hull over 11 gone 38 for one and just remember that trinidad and tobago were dismissed for 83 in 24.2 overs yeah, the guy now on the 15 team requiring 46 runs in 234 balls defending champions trinidad and tobago in their first outing after a wrong one were washed out with some heavy showers in the leeward islands More changes, Mali. It's going to be Ganesh Gobin into the attack. Looks like he's going to bowl left arm orthodox. Ganesh Gobin, number four on his back. Next round of matches will be Trinidad and Tobago versus Barbados in All Saints. Ooh, scuttle on to him, Mali. He's looking to pull that one, got an inside edge. If they want, they can come for three. No, they've changed their mind. They get two runs quite easily. 
We've seen a few deliveries just keep down here. Yeah, they have. Towards the back end of the Ghana teams bowling, the spinners really extracted a bit of turn and bounce out of this pitch. Tomorrow being Good Friday, today being Holy Thursday. Saturday will be the next round of games. Quiet single. Somebody could be in trouble. Direct hitter think he would have been in trouble. Saturday we'll see Trinidad and Tobago versus Barbados at All Saints. Jamaica versus Guyana Bethesda. And we will be calling the game Leeward Islands versus Winwood at Liberta. That's a big game. Three sixty team will be moving out from Coolidge to Liberta. The home of Rakim Cornwall. Rakim Jimbo Cornwall. Kenneth Flipper Benjamin, Weldon Cornwall Sr. The two day champions as well. Forty one for one. Force through the offside. Lovely shot for four. That's a beautiful shot by Emmanuel Lewis. Punch to the offside. Found a gap. And the game is on the go here. Look at that hallmark of that stroke. He stayed quite low into that one, didn't he? Even though it didn't quite bounce. Kept his eye on the ball and he picked up his third boundary here, Emmanuel Lewis. So he moves to 12. All coming from boundaries so far. Solid contact once again. Staying in that shot. Not pulling out of it too early. So getting full value. Made a good sound off the bat, didn't it? He did. So I'm your last here, Mali. Got, got some good talent. Maybe nice. that's where uh, young Dolin probably farted just a bit too upright especially in these conditions at the end of that over 45 for one after 12 yeah some 12 overs being bowled over 50 had dot balls in the process but Emmanuel Lewis is coming and change the whole entire concept of the game so far Trinidad their heads just hanging down Mali they seemed a little dejected small score You can't defend 83 in a 50 over game. Very, very, very difficult indeed. Even if you had four Isaiah Thorns. Mm. Wasn't that long ago Isaiah Thorn would have been taking part in a rising <laughs> stars under 15 <laughs> tournament. <laughs> he must have scared the living daylights out of some of these batters. Me. This one's hiked away over the onside, over that square leg, backward square leg region. So the run's starting to come regularly now. Yet another boundary, this time to Ram. Efficiently. And with a little bit of class, a little touch about it. Some authority too as well from him to Mali. Just the way we dispatch that. Probably the best piece of timing we've seen from Ram so far. That absolutely raced away. Goes to 23 from 34. Turn down the onside. This one is going to race down the hill. Don't think it will have the legs to go for four, but the 50 comes up for the Guyana under 15 team. 51 for one, and they need 33 runs. All happening here. Ram goes to 25. Emmanuel Lewis is a busy player, 12 from nine. And it was Bergen the other day with his 67. Seven. Yes. Showed immense power as well for a 14 year old, for someone under 15. Awesome. Young Bergen played a sweep shot, if I remember correctly. Just behind square, was it in front, in front of square? He was hit with immense power.
power that's a little extraordinary for under 15 players so he's another player to keep an eye on Jose Roberts didn't look bad at all either Mali nah he didn't he'll have to do some batting today four more Mali it was a bit aerial but in the gap in ex through extra cover full toss didn't have that big a gap in which to aim for as we said very well played in the end so he's just now starting to find his timing and his groove Parmeshwar and the partnership Ram. is 25 from 16 yeah no time Malachi. in no time whatsoever I like how the energy that young Emmanuel Lewis has brought to the to the crease and to the game He hasn't had to take any risks in which to do so. Not at all. Mm. So 13 overs bowled, 55 for one. I was talking, Mali, to some of the parents and the supporters here for Trinidad and Tobago. They said, Mr. Springer, we love the beaches. <laughs> of course they do. So they will have an early day for beach today. Well, at least the day would end with a silver lining, I guess. It would be a bit of disappointment. They came here expecting... Especially the defending champs. Probably put up a better batting performance at least. They definitely underperformed with the bat. Their next game is against uh, Hurricane Barbados. Mm. So and that's going to be an All Saints. That's a, that's a big game more or less. Punch down the onside. If you're wondering what's happening on the Cricket West Indies YouTube channel, it's the Cricket West Indies Rising Stars Under-15 Championship. I like him, Mali. I like it. I like him. I like him. He's showing some intent. Wants to get on with it. Showing good skill as well. Just opening the face there. Looking to find that gap. Guyana, uh, the CPL champions. So some of these young players would have had an opportunity to witness CPL matches in Guyana. And they know that they're not far off from getting in that groove a couple of years' time from now. He's giving his hand away. You think he gets away with Yes, he does get away with that one. And he knows that too. He just lost his shape there. Hands went. He was playing low to the ball all the time, and this one he just decided that he was going to go through with it, got away with it. Yeah, it looked like Terry Richard actually. Just struggling to gauge the flight of the ball. The flight of that ball in the end didn't get his hand, a hand to that one. He was in the air for a long time. Seen him just signal to his skipper, maybe. The sun was in his eyes a little bit. That's no excuse, though. There's sun is always around. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> sun is always around, Mali. <laughs> and there's a technique to it as well. And these, these are things you want to see being imparted onto these young guys. Especially if you're not wearing sunglasses. You try and get a side on as possible. Use your arm to block that sun out. So you try and get good sight of the sun. An important thing, Mali, is to look at the flight of the ball. Mm. You have to know where the flight is and how you're going to get your body into the right position. Everything, it's about mechanics and angles. Got to pick it up. You've got to use that arm as a shield almost. Played by the young man. So over number 14 is completed. 56 for one. 56 for one. In fact... At the end of over number 15, that was a drinks break. Trinidad and Tobago were 57 for 6. Yeah, similar score, but just lost too many wickets in comparison. Six down after at the first drinks break. You're in big, big trouble. Yeah, not something that the coaching staff or the backroom staff would certainly like. They still had a chance with Zachariah Mohammed at the crease. 
Yeah, Zachariah Mohammed, I like him. Yeah, it was that dismissal really that would have pushed them over the edge in terms of not being able to post the competitive total here. You start to look at Zayn Maraj and the, the little time he was there, man, he, he could look, tell he looks organized. Yeah. If he gets going, could be trouble. Even Roberto Badri as well. Got a good technique. This one's cut away. Will get close to the boundary. In fact, Richard could give up now. He's gone for four. That so was a poor delivery, Mali. Yeah, but put away quite efficiently from Emmanuel Lewis. Very proactive, as you said. Positive intent. Got, uh, di got deep into the crease, yeah, too, Mali. Yeah, always looking to, to, to score. To score. Is that his fourth boundary here? Oh, yes. He's in a hurry, Mali. He wants to get to the beach. <laughs> He's 17 from 14. But we know there are not too many of those in Guyana, so best to make use of them when you can. <laughs> I remember the first time we went to Oh, Guyana. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that, Mali. <laughs> uh. you, you took us to the seawall. I was like, <laughs> coming from Antigua, I was wondering what that was. <laughs> what kind of river <laughs> why was the water that color <laughs> <laughs> you remember that right Wally <laughs> I was like this is in the Caribbean uh, no. yeah, yeah. You're right this is South America South America mm. oh gosh that never bounced Mali. that beat everyone gone to the keeper you can get they'll get a buy Bernard Joseph, the big Bernard Joseph gets his hand up. I think the positioning of the keeper as well to Mali. You have it, mentioned that, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, look at him. It's not coming over into the natural cultural position that you would expect to see of the keeper. I think similar to what we saw happen to Sohil Mohammed as well. Just not getting the technique right in terms of shutting those legs, using the pads as that barrier. Long barrier. Got to get into that position as well, too. That's why you have the pads on. Mm. They get another single misfeel again. Yeah, sloppy stuff. Oh, and the keeper not collecting cleanly at all. Got blinded. You know, when you go to at this tournament, at this level, Mali, there are three aspects that I look for. I, I look for a wiki keeper. I look to see how he catches the ball. I, I want to see a nice batsman. And I look for fast bowlers. I don't worry too much about the spinners. Three areas that I concentrate on. You always want to see someone with some class. Keepers having a tarry time. I tell you what, though, as much as we, we really love... Uh, Another buy. Yeah, another buy added to the total. We love fast bowling here in the West Indies. How brilliant would it be to see a, 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 a mystery spinner unearthed in one of these tournaments? Someone just a little different. I have to get up to answer you to that one, Mali. Just give me a little chance so we'll talk at the end of this delivery. Fair to say our last match winning spinner who could really win matches in all formats for us would be a Sonny on the right. Someone in that kind of mold. And I think you have to give credit to a son in Larai Mali because 13 years playing in the IPL, whether you like it or not, as a West Indian, that has to be, as a spinner, superlative um, in the context. One of the problems which I, I find is happening in Mali is our coaching stock. I don't think our coaches know how to handle our spinners. So you look at the people like the Hayden Watch and company, they struggle because there's really nobody with the technical aspect that can be able to, to help them. Even a Dennis Bullai. A Dennis Bullai is supposed to be a West Indian spinner. Uh, but how was he handled? It's that as well. We've seen some of the tactics here, even as you said in that first innings from Guyana. Leaves a lot to be desired in terms of the coaching and the tactics. Jeez. That's a very good shot, that again. from Time in, Mali. Time in. Can get three here. Almost got... Almost got to the boundary, timed sweetly from the young man. Got into a fantastic position. 
You see that head position as well, staying low into the shot, using that core strength, you and almost picking up four runs. You only have to just look at the just concluded women's tournament in St. Kitts and Nevis. Um, you know, you look at some of the, the players who are playing for the West Indies team, they have not even advanced. They are just stagnant. They're just there. Yeah, still a lot of developing to do. Still a lot of systems to be created, environments to be fostered for these youngsters. Feeling in that tournament was um, sometimes ju just some simple catches. You know, you, you wonder what's happening. As if some of the young ladies are still afraid of the ball. Ram, 30 now. This whole partnership has done very well. This run rate is now above 4, 4.26 to be exact. And it's been low risk scoring, to be fair. I haven't had to take too many risks. You know, they didn't need to. I think the Indians have been propelled by Emmanuel Lewis as well, too. It's just added a bit of energy impetus to the innings here. 20 of 18. Partnership is 36 from 34. This is Mali was talking. They've been business alike. I think one of the roles as that over comes to an end, Mali. 15 overs. As a matter of fact, 16 overs. They are 66 for one. Is how well do we utilize our legends you know how well do we utilize our legends you know you got people like Courtney Walsh when you look at some of the young prospects and I'm talking about in the respective territories we have to utilize our legends especially to help with our young development of our players yeah especially here as well at the CCG over at the sticky wicket facility quite a lot of memorabilia you got the uh, not the statues, but the players outside the sticky wicket with a lot of information on it as well in terms of their careers. I wonder how many of these young guys would have been over there to have a little read. Squeeze away, pass backward point out to the sweeper. And Emmanuel Lewis gets a single. Yeah, those pictures over there commemorating uh, the, 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 the glory years of West Indies cricket. And as you said, under 15, I remember we did the under 19 Rising Stars campaign. And it was a perfect opportunity to use the legends in terms of the naming of the squads. Something we talked about after, him. Yeah. I think I could, it I was could taken up after. Uh, yeah, We've seen it taken up after, but at the time... It was just like team A, team B, team green, team red. Like there are ways in which we can the educate. Fl flamingos and yeah. uh, just really didn't add up at all into the context. You know the first time we had a the Leeward Islands on the 15 team, your dad came and spoke to the team down at Rising Sun's ground. Yep. I mean, yep. you, the, that, the motivation alone of, I remember folks asking me, how did you get Fifth Richards? It says, why? <laughs> you just ask him. Yeah, that was the first West Indies on the 15 tournament. I remember that very well. Kerry Skeppel, actually, and Tegan would have made the West Indies on the 15 World Cup squad. Steve Leibert was the vice captain. Lionel Baker. I think that was a couple of years after, to be fair. But there was so much talent that came to Robert mm. Joseph. Robbie Joseph as yeah. well, yeah. Former England A. Seema. Seema. Kent. K. West. There's so many players that I could talk about, Mali. That Lloyd that, that West. Lloyd West that came to, came to, came to you there. Austin Richards, Anthony Martin. Martin. I tell people that Anthony Martin started as a fast bowler. It's one of the fastest bowlers you would see mm. at that age. age. Delivery that from Sinclair, Ch Sinclair Challenger, Sassam. Yeah. Bright future, yeah. Ryan Nurse from Barbados. And yeah, Shane Jeffers as well, too. It was also in that conversation. West Indies on the 19 coach. No, Rohan Nurse, Nurse as well. He's a former captain. Yeah. 
Fabulous on the 15 on the 19s. So 68 for one. Ghana larger in control. Looks like they won't need Hetmeyer today. So Sean Devers, we won't get an opportunity to see Hetmeyer. Who knows? You may do. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see Mali if we'll see Hetmeyer here. No, Coolidge. The name TNT versus Jamaica. Next game, Coolidge, Jamaica versus Barbados. No, I'll have to go searching to see Hetmeyer. Sean. Oh, flighted. Sweet. Four runs. That's a nothing delivery. Nothing. Come. Hits got the rope now. And it got the treatment it deserved. Another boundary to Ram. Just a slow full toss outside that off stump. All he had to do was find that gap. He did it quite well in the end. Required run rate now. Well below one run and over. Not 0.48 burn. Make it 15. So, Ghana, large and in control. Just going about their business in a clinical way. Wonder what's happening at Bethesda, Barbados. They oh, were. That, that must be a beating, Mali. And that small batting track. Barbados were in complete control there. Gavin Tong, test player, Anthony Martin, that's their ground, Kelvin Pittman. That area has produced so many outstanding cricketers. This one's gone high. In that vacant mid-wicket region, no real timing from Emmanuel Lewis this time. But he manages to pick up two nonetheless. Yeah, score in the meantime goes up to 75 for one. This one could be done and dusted. Seems like slow proceedings over there at the Bethesda Cricket Ground because my scorecard still saying 183 without loss. Maybe it might be rain over there. Uh, that, that score was like a long time ago. It did. <laughs> See, 183 without loss of 33 overs. Surely it can't still be 33 <laughs> overs in the first <laughs> innings. By now they should be thinking about lunch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one's over the away. upside again. So Beautiful Lewis. shot. Wow. Showing all his skill here, Emmanuel Lewis. Going over the offside this time. Good signs for the young man. Lovely little cricketer. So 49 far. is a partnership, Mali. In no time. Just and five he, runs required He's now. got 27 out of the 49. Scoring at well above 100. 27 of 23. Emmanuel Lewis. He's gone again, Mali. Again. He's gone again, this Mali. Time, this is even better from the young man. He's gone again, Mali. There's a fielder position at that short extra cover there for the catch. But he's just timed it sweetly. Once again, the line allowed him to free the arms. Yet another boundary to him. Just one run now for victory for Guyana. I hope they're not following the scoreboard because... Well, let's find out, Mali, because the umpires look... Well, I think he's... Bernard is trying to get clarification. Now it should be one more run. Do we have that right? Over comes to an end. Yeah. Yeah, so it should be one run. 14 runs came from that Ganesh Gobin over. And the Trinidad and Tobago contingent area, they are stunned. Absolutely stunned. Quarter to one here. And this game is on the verge of being over, Vern. The Ghana under-15 team, they are just ready to just run on onto the field. They're excited. It's been a dominant, dominant performance from the Ghana team so far. Normally, you know, Trinidad and Tobago in this contest, they always, you know, I was following some of the, the series of the games, they always tend to dominate. So Ghana getting one on Trinidad and Tobago today. Batting just really... Let this Trinidad and Tobago team down. Arif Khan, 5 for 18. 
He's the man who really started it today. Look out, teams. Look out for the name, Arif Khan. Look out for Emmanuel Lewis as well, because mm. I can picture him getting a few wickets as well with that new ball if he continues swinging it the way he does and the way he's batted here. Victory for Ghana on the 15. They come out in a small way. 84 for one in 18.4s. So they have finished the game inside 20 overs, Mali. Yeah, they have. Winning by nine wickets over defending champions Trinidad and Tobago under 15. Yeah, as it said, just not enough runs made by this Trinidad and Tobago under 15 team. Guyana winning by nine wickets. Arif Khan, five for 18. He did the major damage here this morning. And he was backed up quite admirably by the batters in the end. Parmeshwar Ram and Emmanuel Lewis both finishing unbeaten. What a game. A game of cricket. The development of the future. The Cricket West Indies Rising Stars Under-15 Championship. Round two. The supporters applaud the Trinidad and Tobago team. They stand to applaud them. Not a this performance that they would have liked, but it's good to see the parents and the supporters supporting them in a very, very big way. Thank you, Trinidad and Tobago, for your contribution to West Indies cricket and especially to the development of the game. But some talent was on show. We did see some talent today, Mali. Yeah, we did. Obviously, uh, Arif Khan and you've got Emmanuel Lewis, uh, two that would have really stand, stood out. Uh, young Adrian Hetmeyer wasn't needed with the bat here today, but we did see him with the ball, both some good deliveries as well at times. Yeah. So quite a lot of talent on show. Certainly, man. And talent off the field as well, too. Um, Gerard Edwards, who's been promoted to as a match referee. It's good to see Gerard um, here officially in his first official tournament. So well done, Gerard Edwards. And Donald Shackles on show here with Bernard Joseph, Avoy Knight, um, the standby umpire. So, all well, Trinidad and Tobago contingent. Not the outing and showing that they would have liked today, but they'll go back to the drawing board and come back. Yeah, definitely. Defending champs, not what you come to expect from a Trinidad and Tobago team, especially in that batting department. Uh, but you expect them to take this one on the chin as oh. they say oh yes and they'll be coming back they definitely in the next match coming back hard then still looking and for their next game is against Barbados against Barbados a must win encounter that what that yeah. one will be yeah so pretty early days so folks we want to say thanks to Jason Mayne Mally Richards and myself and for our camera guy um, it really was indeed a pleasure working today and covering this game in here's like an ice box can't wait to get out into the into the the sun and get some vitamin C um, going in the area. Ghana winning by nine wickets over the defending champions Trinidad and Tobago under 15. Just to give you a recap very quickly, Trinidad and Tobago bowled over 83 in 24.2 overs and Ghana winning by some nine wickets. On behalf of the entire team, Jason 360 crew and the cameraman Mallory Richards, this is Vernon Springer. Signing out here on the Crooked West Indies YouTube channel.